Good evening and welcome to Ray Skillman Stadium for tonight's Metropolitan Interscholastic Conference game between the Center Grove Trojans and the North Central Panthers. Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Conrad along with Ted Kitchell and Rick Embry. We welcome you to Center Grove Trojan football and Ted Kitchell, the great and late uh, Al Davis said it best, the Trojans, they just need to win, baby. That's, uh, that's the situation right now. Bottom line, Trojans at uh, one and three on the season in the conference and uh, uh, really, really struggling right now. But tonight, they just need to put it together and get a win. Yeah, the parents and the kids just need to hang in there. I mean, uh, you know eventually you're not going to be playing the number one, two, or three guy in the state, which they've done over the past four weeks. So uh, even though the record doesn't look very good, they've probably learned a lot about themselves. They'll continue to learn, and I would expect them to get well tonight. I expect them to play well to, to establish the running game, which is obviously the backbone of the wing T offense. I expect them to run the ball early and and, 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 and a lot. I would think they would uh, really uh, be able to pick up some yardage against this North Central team who's also very much on uh, struggling at 0-4. Yeah, uh, North Central tonight 0-4, and, and I should correct myself. Uh, Center Grove 0-3 in the conference, 1-3 and on the season. And the, again, Ted, in the conference, uh, you open up the season against uh, Warren Central, Carmel, and Ben Davis, all three teams highly ranked not only in the state but in the Midwest and nationally as well. And uh, Center Grove very competitive against Carmel, obviously, very competitive against North Central, or I should say Warren Central. And, and for a half, I thought, against Ben Davis last week, very, very competitive. Yeah, those three teams are just, just have a few more things, a little bit more speed. Uh, you know, I, I came into this season knowing that it was going to be a little bit of a struggle only because, again, I feel like the two most important places on the wing T offense is the offensive line and your quarterback. And both of those are, are young. I mean, young offensive line. And Joey, uh, even though he's played quarterback his entire life, he hasn't played on the big stage. And he's just, you know, he, he's, he'll be fine. I mean, it's just a matter of time. So don't, don't lose, lose hope. Uh, there's a lot of games and I, to, still to play, and I would expect Center Grove to get on a roll and, uh, you know, win four or five in a row. Tonight's pregame show is being presented by Duke Holmes. Duke Holmes in its 28th year of business, and Duke Holmes continues to place its focus on its roots, producing and developing the best home sites and homes in central Indiana. Duke Holmes, a proud supporter of Center Grove Trojan football. Up next, the Center Grove head coach, Eric Moore, will join us to preview tonight's matchup. This is Center Grove Trojan football. When it comes to quality, we don't cut corners. When it comes to excellence, our work ethic is unparalleled. When it comes to honesty, we live and breathe by it. When it comes to custom homes and remodeling, we've been serving Central Indiana for 28 years. And when it comes to relationships, well, that's what we do. Because when it comes to your community and your unique custom home, it's all about you. Welcome to Duke Homes. Where's the best place to get answers about your water? Aqua Systems, the home water experts. Since 1959, Aqua Systems has been manufacturing and installing top quality water softeners, drinking water systems, and whole house filtration systems for even the toughest water issues. Stop by anytime to get your water tested free and learn more about how we can help you have better water. If you need bottled water or salt delivered to your home or office, we do that too. CG football fans, mention this ad and get a special discount. And most importantly, go Trojans! When I raised my son, I never knew he was going to be a custom home builder. But what I did know, whatever he did, he would be the best. Standing here with Coach Moore. Coach, you started the week addressing your team and also addressed the Parents Club on Wednesday about not rocking the boat. And it's a specific theme with this football program, being on a boat, everyone having an oar. It doesn't matter if it's the manager, the film crew, the trainer, the coaches, the offense, the defense, the scout team, everybody has a spot and we don't want to rock that. Can you address that a little bit further? Yeah, you know, when you're one in three, everybody wants to ask questions and ask why. So the simple question is, let's just talk about us. So our focus this week was on Center Grove, not on North Central. We're going to run, we're going to block, we're going to tackle, we're going to do what we do, and hopefully it's just against a Panther. Uh, and at some points of, your, of, your, of, the, of the season, you, you, everybody sort of turns this week of their schedule where, you know, they got to concentrate more on what we're doing and what they're doing. And it's time now. We played three really, really good football teams and one – 
another Whiteland team that's having a good year. So we've played excellent football against excellent teams. We've got to figure out what's going on within ourselves. Why are we making mental mistakes? Why are we making physical mistakes? So instead of sitting here and feeling sorry for ourselves and wanting to blame everybody, we just need to look at ourselves. All we did this week was we didn't get more critical or more vocal. It was just let's just think about us. Let's just work on us and getting CG football better. I had the opportunity to hear the head coach of Boston College after their big victory over USC last Saturday, and it was a similar type of concept. He got in front of that team and he said, you know, one of the things when you put on that jersey at Boston College is to be the best version of yourself, best version in the classroom, best version in society, and best version on the football field. And kind of going back to what you are saying, if you look at the last four weeks, we have improved, but we're not where we want to be, and this is an opportunity to be that best version. Well, yeah, we don't want to be the greatest in week four or week five tonight. We want to get better. We want to win the game tonight. But we're, well, I've, well, I talked about two weeks ago, Red October. When, we, when it's October, we want the red, the big red machine from Center Grove to be the best then when we're entering the playoffs. So every week is an addition problem to making that a, a better tournament for us and having success. But, you know, we represent a lot here, a lot of community people. Center Grove football is a big item. Home games are huge. Come out tonight. It's going to be a great football game. You're going to see great athletes on – from North Central as well as Center Grove. And I, I look forward to having a great game with a great crowd. But every week when we're out here, we have a lot of people, a lot of eyes upon us. And honestly, I think we've all got a little bit taken back to just, we're always just going to show up and be the best team. And sometimes that doesn't happen. You have to work a little harder. North Central never typically up at the top of the mixed innings, but they do have athletes. It's not uncommon for a couple to go to Division One every year. It's Bantam night. A lot of kids going to be here looking at the big red machine. It's always an exciting time. Most fun for me, I, I get totally unfocused on pregame to watch all the future Trojans walking down the track. And the funny thing about it is, you know, I, I remember the Holt boys that play for us now, your sons, uh, when they were little, and, and my son when he was little, and, and their friends when they were little in, in the Bantam leagues. And if you don't think we don't, we don't remember that and we don't focus on the Bantam, you know, uh, you're wrong. This is Our community is, is built on that Bantam football, and it really produces a great product you know, for the high school. So, yeah, it's exciting for Bantam football tonight. Hope the kids walk down the track, and then I hope they get to stay and see a, see a great football game. It's always fun to watch them set in the end zone seats and have a great time. Uh, just it's not a better place to be on a Friday night than Center Grove for a home football game. Well, bottom line is we're here for an exciting game. Coach, you have our support. The staff has our support. The players have our support. We're going to get this thing rolling. It's time to start tonight. Tonight's the start of our new season. Good luck. When it comes to quality, we don't cut corners. When it comes to excellence, our work ethic is unparalleled. When it comes to honesty, we live and breathe by it. When it comes to custom homes and remodeling, we've been serving Central Indiana for 28 years. And when it comes to relationships, well, that's what we do. Because when it comes to your community and your unique custom home, it's all about you. Welcome to Duke Homes. Appetizers, gentlemen. I'll start with the steak tartare. And you, sir? I'll have the same. Uh, but hold the tartare sauce. The tartare sauce? Really? I don't like it. The more you save on insurance, the more you'll have for football. Drivers who switch their home and auto to Allstate save an average of $503 a year. Are you in good hands? Ooh, creamy brulee. When I raised my son, I never knew he was going to be a custom home builder. But what I did know, whatever he did, he would be the best. School for tonight's Metropolitan Interscholastic Conference game between Center Grove and North Central. Kevin Conrad joined by Ted Kitchell and Rick Embry. And Ted, we got some great football weather tonight. 72 degrees here at kickoff. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, perfect night here on the south side. Everybody's come out. Obviously, the little guys are all out here. The uh, the programs that help Eric build what he has built here in, in, on the south side. I thought it was very interesting what Eric said as far as the 
everybody becomes a little bit spoiled, whether it be the players, the families, everybody, you know, just thinks, well, we show up and Center Grove always wins. And it just doesn't always work out that way. I mean, when you're one of the top programs, you have to perform at a high level at all times. And if you don't, these other teams, they got to – they love to put that uh, target on your back and, and look forward to playing you just, uh, you know, like everybody does. But so uh, sounds like they took their put their hard hats back on this week and went back to work, and I'm interested to see what, what type of game they have tonight. Coach Moore in his 16th year at Center Grove. On the season, Center Grove again 1-3, and 0-3 oh in the conference in the uh, state polls this week. Center Grove in 6A, number 12 in the AP media poll, and number 9 in the coaches poll. The Head coach for the North Central Panthers, Kevin Kreinhagen, in his first year as the head coach. 0-4 on the season, still looking for his first career win as a head coach. Uh, he's been with North Central, though, as an assistant coach since 2002 and had a great playing career at the University of Indianapolis as a quarterback and led Seymour High School as a player back in the day to the state championship and lost to Hobart in the state championship. So he's got quite a quite a background in, the, in Indiana high school football and Ted, you look at the series between these two teams, it's pretty lopsided. Center Grove has won 13, lost four, and that's in 17 meetings. And Center Grove won big last year against North Central, 41-14. But again, like we mentioned early on, Ted, tonight Center Grove just needs to minimize the mistakes, execute, do a better job blocking and tackling, and just uh, get a win tonight. They just need a win in the worst kind of way. Yeah, they need to control the offensive line. They need to come right out, establish themselves with the run. Uh, as you said, North Central has never been – uh, I, I don't know. They, they just don't get out of it what you think they ought to. I mean, it's a huge school up, obviously, on the north side of town. They have a lot of tremendous athletes. And every year, you know, one or two or three of their guys go uh, to big pro college programs. So they obviously have a lot of talent. They just have not been able to, to build something there and win a state championship or get to this finals and things like that. So uh, it is a little lopsided in Center Grove's hands. But uh, – Tonight, you know, they, they just need to concentrate on themselves and uh, moving the football, especially moving it in the wing tee. Tonight is Senegro Bantam Football League night, like Ted said. And a great crowd tonight. The youngsters out in force tonight for tonight's Trojan football game. And uh, we're just moments away before the kickoff. The Senegro Trojans about to emerge from the south end zone inflated helmets. Here are your Center Grove Trojans. Tonight's opening quarter being presented by Center Grove Aqua Systems. Is your water hard? Does it taste bad? Is it damaging your fixtures and your appliances? If you'd like to find out more about how you can improve your home's water, talk to Center Grove Aqua Systems located on State Road 135, just south of Stone Creek Restaurant. Or give them a call at 317-889-6829 or visit them online at ilovemywater.com. Center Grove Aqua Systems, our first quarter sponsor tonight. It looks like North Central won the toss and they've decided to defer and kick off. They're going to kick from south to north. I would think this is exactly what Eric Moore would have wanted, to get the ball and uh, see what things they've been working on all week in practice and seeing if they can take control of the football line, take control of the offensive line, move the football down the field and put some points on the board. Center Grove right now averaging only about nine points a game. This is an offense that we're used to seeing average 30 points a game and a lot of rushing yards, and they've just not got, gotten into it yet this year. North Central and the white uniforms trimmed in black for the Center Grove Trojans in the home traditional red jerseys, white pants. Center Grove looking for its first win in Mick play. Likewise for North Central, they stand at 0-2. For North Central, losses to Fishers and Hamilton Southeastern in non-conference play. They lost to Warren Central 32 to nothing and Lawrence North last week 32-13 in Mick play. Center Grove's lone win coming against Whiteland, 14-13 on the road, a non-conference win. Connor Steve and Titus McCoy back deep for the Center Grove Trojans. Elijah Haltonen, Jr., 
will place the ball at the left hash mark. As we're ready for some Nick football here at Ray Skillman Stadium. Again, great crowd tonight. The north end zone bleachers completely full. Again, Centigro Bantam Football League tonight. The youngsters out in force to support the Trojans here tonight. And this is a little pop-up kick, and it's going to be taken at the 32. And Centigro will have great field position at the 35-yard line. With the return is Bailey Moran, 5'10", senior. Little surprise, the kicker must not have a lot of leg because the wind was behind him there. You'd have thought that, uh, you know, any wind, there's not a lot of wind tonight, but a little wind behind him, and they still decided to pooch kick it. Center Grove, great uh, field position to start the game. Max Norris, lone back in the backfield. Joey Siderwitz under center. First handoff to the wing back. Titus McCoy, spin move, and he's tackled at the first down marker. Just going to be a little shy of the first down. Nine yards for the sophomore, Titus McCoy. Another great run right there. I mean, he went in. It looked like he was going to gain about three yards, and all of a sudden he comes out of that pile, and he's gained nine. Great individual effort. Head for the Center Grove offensive line. No returning starter, so uh, they're learning each and every week, and it's difficult to learn when you play Warren Central, Carmel, and Ben Davis, but uh, each week they are getting better. Center Grove doing a better job with the running game, especially last week in the first half against Ben Davis. Center Grove very effective in that opening half, moving the chains, and Max Norris here picks up four to get the first down. Yeah, when you watch football, I mean, it's always fun to watch a, you know, Peyton Manning or Tom Brown. Uh, Peyton Manning or Tom Brady or uh, a lot of the specialty guys, but the things that win games are offensive lines and defensive lines, and whoever has the best of those usually comes out on top. Flag Far side, flags down here on the near side. Calvin Daggett with a nice run, but uh, let's see if it'll stand or not. A couple of flags down. Flag thrown at the 49-yard line. Is that a chop block yeah, against chop Center block. Grove? Chop block against the Trojans. They've uh, gotten away from people chopping people because they've had so many knee injuries over the, the years football. So uh, usually have to meet them above the belt. They don't want you down there around their knees and ankles. Ted, one observation you had before we went on is that Center Grove has had a lot of penalties this year you know, compared to their opponent. 205 penalty yards compared to their opponent that's around 100. And uh, for an offense that is built on, on getting 10 to 12 yards, you know, every three, I mean, that's really what they're looking to do. Well, all of a sudden, you stick them back at first and 20 or whatever. Now they've got to, to do some things that they're not comfortable doing. The penalty negates the eight-yard pickup by Calvin Daggett. They'll go right back to Daggett, and he's in the open field. He's got a first down. He's inside the 40. 22 yards for the senior, Calvin Daggett. Looked like he had a big hole. Nice job by the offensive line, getting him a hole on the left side, and he turned, you see him coming to, to the left. You can see he turned it up quicker. Didn't try to get all the way out around the edge. He turned it up, saw a hole, and got 20 yards. Corey Stewart, sophomore defensive back with the saving tackle for North Central. Ball in Panther territory. At the 39. Siderwitz, straight ahead running. Titus McCoy now to the left, inside the 20. Foot race down the sideline. He's inside the five and pushed out of bounds, taken down at around the three or four yard line. 27 yards for the sophomore. Well, it looks like some of the things they worked on in practice, uh, most importantly, working on themselves to mentally get prepared. Forget who you're playing and forget about what they're doing. Let's do what we do as best we can. And uh, the offensive line, again, doing a nice job around the left edge right there. Titus McCoy, nice run, and uh, now they're in scoring position. 35 yards on the run for McCoy. Great downfield blocking by senior Jay Doyle. First and goal at the three. Hand off, coming here to the near side, trying to get outside as McCoy with a stiff arm, bounces around a defender or two and ran a lot, maybe got a yard or two. He'll be down to the one yard line. Yeah, it looked like he ran about 40 yards there to pick up two, but uh, that's two that they needed. There you take a look at him. He's trying to find anything to square his shoulders and try to get to the goal line. He got down to about the one and a half. Inside 10 minutes to play first quarter. 
Second and goal. They'll mark it at the two. Seneca Grove with a great opening drive. North Central has given up a lot of points this year. Straight ahead running. Titus McCoy's in there. Touchdown. Touchdown, Titus McCoy. Well, that's what they needed. Uh, uh, they took the ball on the kickoff, moved it right down the field. Even though they got a penalty, they got a great run from Titus McCoy. Uh, he did a majority of the work right there. Coach Moore let him take it in and uh, get the touchdown. So that's that's what the Center Grove offense is needed. They just need a spark, and I would expect them to continue to do that type of thing here tonight. First touchdown of the season for Titus McCoy. Nathaniel Snyder with the extra point kick. It is up and it is good. And Center Grove strikes first, seventh to nothing. Opening drive, nine minutes, 32 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Again, Titus McCoy on a two-yard touchdown run. His first score of the season. Center Grove has not led many games up to this point. Uh, so that's got to give the defense a, a big boost as, as they get ready to kick off here. And then to put the defense on the field, all of a sudden you're up a touchdown. You'll probably see a little extra kick in their step also as uh, they're feeling good about themselves trying to get a victory here at home tonight. For the Center Grove Trojans, six plays all on the ground. Moving the ball 65 yards in two minutes, 24 seconds. Tynus McCoy, his first touchdown of the season from two yards out. And moving it in big chunks. I mean, that's the type of thing that you're used to seeing with the wing tee, uh, you know, that we were not able to do against the great Warren Central defense, uh, Carmel and Ben Davis. All those teams, you know, very well schooled. A little bit better athlete probably as far as quickness than Center Grove, and they just were not able to take advantage. But here tonight against North Central, better blocking by the offensive line and better holes, and it creates points. Nathaniel Snyder will kick off for the Center Grove Trojans. Snyder's been very effective with his kickoffs this season. I think, I think only returned, what, one maybe? I think he's only, yeah, all but two have gone to the end zone this season this one's very high and it will get into the end zone so well done by the junior nathaniel snyder north central will set up camp from its own 20 yard line yeah north central is it you take a look at them they've got a left-handed quarterback and uh you know three names really kind of stick out as you watch them uh, number 33 milton mccain he's the best running back they got and then you got number two their wide receiver Jared Clark and Austin Roberts, the quarterback. So uh, they really look to these three guys. They're about 75 to 80% of their offense. Quarter number one being presented by Cinegrove Aqua Systems. They, the other thing to remember is North Central's gained about twice as much yardage passing the football as they have running. So they're a team not really looking to run the ball that much. Austin Roberts from shotgun formation. He will tuck and run. He'll be chased down from behind by Javon Swan. The junior catches him at the 15. Five-yard loss. Good job by the DBs downfield. Uh, you know, safeties and defensive backs right there. Just really no place for him to throw. Second and 15. Roberts, junior quarterback, 5'10", 185 pounds. Works from the gun. Javon Swan off the snap very quickly. He's in the backfield. Sack made though by the senior left in Gavin Everett. Another five yard loss. Well, he's off really quick. Let's see it right here. I thought he was off sides. Yeah, I think he was. But the official didn't see it. So uh, Center Grove more than happy to take it. And they're looking at third down at about 20. Boy, if you're North Central, you got to be careful here. I mean, you'd like to pick up the first down or at least a few yard, a little yardage so you can punt the football away. Third and 20, the call. At the North Central 10-yard line, rolling to his right, still looking. Nobody open downfield. Now he's going to run the football and taken down by Jackson Sodrell just across the 15. So it'll be a punting situation here for the North Central Panthers. Well, Center Grove should get great field, you know, advantage again. I mean, with this punt, he's going to be almost in the end zone punting the football. So uh, Center Grove should get this football in great field position around the 50-yard line. 
Seven yards for Roberts on the carry. The punter is Robert Young. He's a wide receiver, senior, six foot, 195 pounds from his own four yard line. Connor Steve back at the 50. Line drive punt down that far sideline. Steve will chase it down at the 40 and they wrap him up at the 43 yard line. So a three yard return and a 43 yard punt by Young. Yeah, that was a good punt, effective punt. He didn't get it up in the air and have any hang time, but he directionally kicked it uh, where the center grove guy did not have much time to be able to field the ball and run it up, run, run it down the field. So I would uh, expect more of the same here as far as running the football. I would not expect them to throw the football very much tonight. I, would, I think they feel like they have an advantage and they can move the football down the field. Center grove in front, seven to nothing. 7.20 to play here in the opening quarter. Joey Siderwitz underneath. Screen pass to Max Norris. Oh, and Norris picks up the first down, and Devin Hensley, the wide receiver, with an unbelievable block. We'll have to watch this. Yeah, I mean, replay. he lifts him off his feet, loosens his teeth right here. You can see he's focused in 52. He's, he's one of their top two players at linebacker. Now, in the NFL the other night, I saw that that was a penalty. I can't believe that it's not a penalty in high school because – I mean, it, it's okay to hit the guy, but to lo really lower the boom on him, you know. As long as no helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, I guess. No, well, I mean, in the pros, it was, uh, I forget I what know. they called it. You probably saw it too, Rick, but they I called it. it, basically, the guy doesn't see you, so you can't come up and just bust him like that. It is the linebacker for North Central, Rashid Poindexter. He's a junior, 5'10", 190, and he's being looked at right now at the 40. 647 yard line at the moment the play stands it is a 13 yard catch by Norris and now pointing Dexter on his feet he seems to be okay and going to walk off under his own power well I'm not I mean don't get me wrong I'm not saying that it's a dirty play or anything but I'm just saying the other night I saw it and it surprised me and it usually happens on punt returns where, where the guys are watching the ball and then they start running just like he was. He was focused in on the runner right there and somebody comes back and cracks you pretty good. Uh, I don't think, you know, it wasn't a, a dirty play. I mean, he hit him above the, above the belt and uh, he laid him out. Ball place at the North Central 45 yard line, 7-10 and counting first quarter, Center Grove seven, North Central zero. This is the second drive of the night for the Trojans. Max Norris in the backfield, they go right to Norris. This time North Central, they do a great job to bottle him up at the line of scrimmage. He may have gotten a half yard. Tackle in the middle of that uh, play made by Mitchell Kessler. He's a senior, 6'3", 263. One yard for Norris. Yeah, Devin Hensley with that great block. He's not a not a big player, six foot one seventy. It don't matter how big you are in that situation. If you're focused in on something, and all of a sudden you get broadsided. It 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 looks bad, and it most of the time it loosens your teeth. Looks like Sam Hines, number 68, running in for the Trojans on that O line. Double wing back for the Trojans. Hand off this time to the sophomore, Titus McCoy. Great open field tackle made here in the near side by Xavier Colvin. He's a senior at 5'10. He's a 213 those, pound linebacker. Those are their best two players, 40 uh, defensively, 43 and 52. 52, obviously, is the kid. Poindexter, I think, that got hit, and so he's on the sidelines, but uh, 43 is your other really good, both of them linebackers. Yeah, Colvin is their leading tackler. Third and sixth the call here for Coach Moore and the Trojans. Approaching the six-minute mark here in the first quarter. Calvin Daggett sprints it out to that far side, and he's going to get just inside or maybe right to the 40. Short of the first down. Gets one yard. Fourth and five. Interesting. You got a seven point lead here. You don't want to give them any momentum, but it is fourth and five. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't try to pull them off sides, but uh, I mean, you're in the go zone. You have a lot of confidence 
in your defense. The Center Grove defense has played well all year, but still, you could punt the ball down there and really pin them back, and their offense did not look too comfortable when they had their back against the end zone last time. Colvin again, Ted, with the tackle for North Central. Center Grove lining up to go for it on fourth and five. It is Titus McCoy. He races it here to the near side, and he pushes the pile. He's very close to a first down. Maybe forward progress gets him the first down. Let's see. Real close. got it. They're going to mark him just shy of the 35, so I think they had to get it to the 35 for the first down. They will signal first down North Central. They said he did not yeah. break the plane of the 35 to get the first down, not even going to measure. And they'll put the ball at the 35 for North Central. It's a huge play for North Central. They need something to, you know, kind of turn the momentum here. Center Grove marches the ball right down the field, scores. Then they have it uh, get sacked a couple times here. All of a sudden, they look up there at the 35 yard 35 yard line. They have a good uh, good field position and a couple big plays, and uh, they could turn that momentum. Bramil Mickens, senior defensive back, in on the stop along others for North Central. 5:15 to go here in the opening quarter. First and ten for North Central from its own 35 yard line. Hand off straight up the middle. Center Grove clogging the running lane. Yeah, there's not much there. Center Grove had about three guys right in there over the over the center, and they're just not much room. A couple of yards. Lone man in the backfield. That is Milton McLean. He's a senior, 5'10", 223 pounds, their leading rusher. He's a fullback. They go right to McLean and spins away from the initial tackle. Some tough yards for McLean. Center Grove with the run support. Josh Hart, senior, from the secondary on the stop. Four yards for McLean. Third and three. Nice physical tackle by Josh Hart, senior. Got to find number two here. He's just left of the quarterback, kind of in the slot, kind of in the tight end. He's going in motion. He's their number one receiver. Jared Clark, senior at 6'2", 160 pounds. Long and lanky, and uh, he can run with it once he catches it. Long signal count. Quarterback will keep it after faking it to McLean, and he is hit hard. Well, I'm really amazed right there. I mean, if you have a left-handed quarterback, if you're going to run the, you know, this option like he was right there, you'd think you'd want him coming down the, the, the line, you know, towards the center grove bench. I mean, he, he's running awkwardly to the right right there. It's just uh, kind of a strange play. A couple of yards for the uh, junior quarterback, Austin Roberts. It was Zach Hart, senior cornerback on that far side with a big hit for the Trojans. Fourth and one, wow. and Ted, they're going to line up to go for it. Again, Center Grove's defensive line needs to stay disciplined. Can out afford to jump offside. Down to three, two, one. Coach Kreinhagen calls a timeout, stopping the game clock at one, and the clock for the moment, game clock at 3.13. Play clock was down to one, I should say. Yeah, I'm very surprised that they're even thinking about this right now. I mean, you talk about a momentum swing right here. If Center Grove can somehow get some penetration, knock the, the ball carrier down, I mean, they're going to get the football in great field position, and uh, they've been able to move the ball when they've had it offensively here tonight. Proud supporter of Trojan football, and Duke Holmes now in its 28th year of business. Duke Holmes continues to place its focus on its roots, producing and developing the best home sites and homes in Central Indiana. Duke Holmes, a proud supporter of Center Grove Trojan football. Ted, what'd you go with tonight from Teddy's Burgers Joint? I went for the uh, breaded tenderloin. That's two nights in a row, and uh, I am sold. That is a great sandwich. I heard you talk about it a couple of games ago. That's what I had tonight. Can't go wrong with the tenderloin. Mr. Embry, Embry led, led us in the right direction. He's the one who started that. Like always. Oh, they're punting. Here we go. It's a little bit better decision. Robert Young from his own 30. Connor Steve back for the Center Grove Trojans. Good hang time. Taken just inside his 25. Steve is wrapped up just shy of the 35-yard line, driven out of bounds. And Center Grove will have 
Pretty good field position once again. In front, seven to nothing, 3.05 to play first quarter. Center well, Grove scored on its opening drive. Well, by catching that football, I mean, it's only a net of about 20 yards right there. So uh, Center Grove feeling very good in great field position. Titus McCoy scoring his first touchdown of the season on that opening drive from two yards out. Center Grove on its second drive. It was halted by North Central on fourth down, forcing the Trojans a turnover on downs. From the Trojan 34, Max Norris tripped up behind the line of scrimmage, but he put his hand down, kept on his feet, gets it across the 40 to the 41-yard line. And in the backfield, uh, one of the offensive players Watch for the here. Center Grove Trojans lost him. his helmet. If he doesn't lose his balance right there, he's probably, you know, out on the edge and uh, for a really big game. But he kind of lost his balance. He regained it, still picked up six yards. Nick Davis, sophomore offensive lineman, lost his helmet, comes to the near side. Seven yards for Max Norris, the senior. Second and three. Inside three minutes to play, first quarter. Hand off, Daggett Come on, hit the hole. behind his blockers and picks up the first down. Very, very patient by Daggett. Well yeah. done by the senior. Very good patience. He's got his hand on the uh, on his pulling, pulling right guard here, 55. You take a look at him. See, he's just working him. That, that's a nice patience, patient running right there, not getting out there and letting your blocker do his job. 55, Trevor Floyd, 6'2", 220-pound senior. Doing a great job escorting his running back down the field for a first down. Ball at the Trojan 48, Titus McCoy off right tackle. Gets it across midfield. They'll mark him at the 49. Three yards for Titus McCoy. Trying to see if 52 got back on the field, but I do not see him. I do not see him on the I field either. I see him either. on the left end of the bench over there, so he must be taking a little time. Uh, he's probably got to go through con concussion deal and see if he's even capable of playing here tonight. Siderwitz looking to pass here to the near side. Down and out. It's Devin Hensley. Hensley makes the catch. Six yards. Just short of the first down. They're going to give it a measure, Ted, I do believe. Nope, we got an injured player for North Central. Player down for North Central, Desmond Short, senior defensive lineman. So they'll take a moment to check him out. If you want an experienced professional Greenwood cosmetic dentist, then look no further than Dr. Jim Heck at White River Family Dental. Give him a call at 855-896-2078 or check him out online at greenwoodcosmeticdentist.com. We really appreciate Dr. Jim Heck being our sponsor this year for our Instant Replay. Ted, it's been great to have Instant Replay. It is, it's fun to watch. Sometimes you just don't catch everything the first time through with the live version, so replay really allows you to see that block made or the big hit. Third and one. McCoy in the backfield. Hand off to McCoy. Breaks the tackle, gets the first down. He's to the 40, still trying to push the pile. Now they'll blow the whistle dead. Three yards for the sophomore, Titus McCoy. Center Grove per pretty much can pick up three or four yards anytime they want, it seems like. Uh, they did get stopped by the defense the last time by North Central, but they've been uh, very capable of moving the ball here tonight. Senior Jacob Shiley doing a great job up front with the block, opening up that hole for McCoy. And now they're going to run it outside with Daggett. And great job shooting in there for the North Central Panthers. Bramel Mickens, defensive back with the tackle. Yeah, that was a nice job. The blocker kind of missed him, and he snuck in there. That's what you see, the really good college corners and 
safeties that they do, they just sneak in there behind the offensive lineman and can pick off that running back. That was very, very well done by North Central, and they've got another player down. Ted, congratulations today going to Coach Jim Williams and the Senegal girls golf team. They won the uh, sectional championship down at the Legends, a beautiful place to play, and we wish all the best to the Lady Trojans as they now advance to the regional. There's a lot of good golfers here in this this uh, part of town. Uh, I know the girls have done extremely well, and a lot of those girls are young, a lot of years in front of them. And I know that the boys team, they've, they've got some kids that are uh, just freshmen that are really going to do some great things for their golf, golf program. Second down and 10. Siderwitz fakes the handoff, rolling right, throws underneath. Max snores, and he runs over a couple of North Central defenders. Down to the 25-yard line, 16 yards for the senior. Well done. Well, it's well done by Joey. I mean, he sees him out. Joey could easily run this football, but now right there after they make the linebacker makes a commitment to try to knock down the quarterback, just toss it out there and give it to Max, and uh, he's still pretty quick in the open field. Also, congratulations to Todd Sheely and the Senegro Boys soccer team winning the MIC championship uh, this past week, only the second time in school history. 7-0 and oh in the MIC. Well done, Coach Sheely and the Trojan soccer team. Getting outside, Max Norris still on his feet, slammed to the turf at the 9. Power running by the Center Grove Trojans. Into the quarter. 16 yards for Norris to wrap up quarter number one. Center Grove in front of North Central. Seven to nothing and knocking on the door. We'll take a break. This is Center Grove Trojan football. Where's the best place to get answers about your water? Aqua Systems, the home water experts. Since 1959, Aqua Systems has been manufacturing and installing top quality water softeners, drinking water systems, and whole house filtration systems for even the toughest water issues. Stop by anytime to get your water tested free and learn more about how we can help you have better water. If you need bottled water or salt delivered to your home or office, we do that too. CG football fans, mention this ad and get a special discount. And most importantly, go Trojans. <music> Welcome back to Ray Stillman Stadium. Kevin Conrad, Ted Kitchell, and Rick Embry with you tonight. Center Grove in front after one quarter, seven to nothing over the North Central Panthers. Quarter number two being presented by Allstate Insurance, the Bontrager Agency of Greenwood. Personal financial representative John Bontrager and his family have been a part of the Greenwood Center Grove community for more than 17 years. John provides a high level of service for more than 2,500 customers. The Bontrager Agency is located at 395 South State Road 135 or contact the agency at 317-888-3200. You're in good hands with Allstate. Ted, great opening quarter for the Center Grove Trojans. Yeah, not a lot of points, only seven, uh, one touchdown to show for it, but they're knocking on the door here to start the second quarter and just more, you just got such more, uh, a much more positive feel from the offense that they had confidence they could move the football. First and goal for the Trojans at the nine to begin the second quarter. I think we're one short. Running on the field late for the Center Grove Trojans, Ethan Hart, a sophomore offensive lineman. Now the Trojans are the ready to go. Down to six, four, three, two. Timeout called by Coach Moore. And again, the Trojans didn't have the personnel on the field in a timely manner. So Coach Moore is forced to call a timeout. Proud supporter of Center Grove football. Roofing made easy. And Ted, I know you know Mr. David Moroz just like I do. He's done a lot of great work at my house. How about you? Hey, he spent a lot, a lot of time <laughs> after last winter. We had that ice damming, and uh, he had to tear out our entire garage ceiling. and carpet upstairs it was a mess but uh, he and his men did a fabulous job I mean if you need some work done on your roof that kind of thing he's uh, he's definitely the man to call yeah he really is David Moroz of roofing made easy did a great job on my roof here this past summer and 
painted the trim, just made my house look almost brand new. Uh, give David a call at Roofing Made Easy, 317-372-6233. Let him know you heard us talking about him and his company here on the broadcast, and he'll give you a special discount. Just tell him you heard, heard us talking about uh, Roofing Made Easy on the Center Grove football broadcast. Back to it here. First play of the second quarter, first and goal at the nine. Handoff, the senior, Max Norris, looking touchdown. for the end zone, touchdown, untouched. I thought Eric Moore might give him a shot to get that ball in the end zone. He did a majority of the work getting it down towards the end zone, and uh, Eric paid him off by giving him, uh, giving him the ball to take it in. Nice job by the offensive line, huge hole for Max to move in there. He was able to get to the end zone untouched. Grove in front, 13 to nothing, and nice gesture by the senior here on band of night. He runs into the end zone, runs over here to the sideline, and gives high fives to all the youngsters down there in the corner. How about that? Big highlight for those youngsters. Combs will do the long snapping. Snyder wits to hold. Snyder to attempt the PAT kick, and Snyder with the kick is good, and Grove leads it. 14 to nothing over North Central. 11.57 left to play here in the second quarter. Be interesting to see how North Central uh, you know, does now. They seem to be a team that as long as everything's going well, that they have a lot of energy and stuff, and then all of a sudden you kind of see their shoulders slump when they get down, like here we go again. Well, they're down 14 to nothing on the road in as hostile of environment as you're gonna find in high school football. I mean, a lot of Center Grove fans out here tonight so let's see what uh, North Central is able to do because they've not been able to move the football offensively very well. Center Grove very dominant with the running game on the drive. Ran the ball seven times, a couple of pass plays. Moved at 66 yards in three minutes, eight seconds. Again, Norris on a nine-yard touchdown run, his first score tonight. Titus McCoy was able to score the opening touchdown on the first drive of the night for Center Grove. So the Trojans lead it 14 to nothing. Snyder now will kick to the north end zone. And at the moment, Ted, no wind, no breeze. Yeah, he's not, he won't have any trouble getting this one to the end zone, I don't think. Good hang time. And it goes well into the end zone, about eight, nine yards deep. North Central will begin from its own 20. Looking to put something together offensively. Their opening drive was not good at all. And their second drive, much better, but it did result in a punt. Again, Coach Kevin Kreinhagen. First year as the head coach. He's been an assistant at North Central since 2002. So, Ted, it just takes time to implement uh, your, your, your new system. Well, big schools like that, you have to uh, build an interest. You know, you have to do something and show people that it, because uh, some kids in today's world, if they feel like it's going to be a waste of time, they'll, they'll go home and play videos. Uh, if you show them that you, you're building something, a lot of times then they, they get on board. You know, like what Dullahan did over on the west side with Ben Davis, what uh, Kevin Wright and them did uh, on the east side of town with Warren. The toss to Rashawn Davey hit at the line of scrimmage. And Davey a little slow getting up from that one. Hit made by Cameron Ted and Jackson Sodrell. Yeah, they're going to definitely have to throw the football. Uh, Jared Clark, Center Grove has done a nice job on him, number two. He is their best receiver. Comes in with an average of almost 28 yards a catch. So far, we have not seen him catch the football or even go at him tonight. Oh, that's early movement. A lot of movement on that left side of the offensive line. And Ted, uh, the numbers speak highly tonight uh, what's going on. Center Grove, total offense, 163 yards, North Central, six. Yeah, I was going to say, that's more the numbers that you're looking for from Center Grove and the wing tee and the running offense that they're used to. I mean, we're used to seeing them run for three or 400 yards in a game. So far, they've only run for about 692 in four games. So uh, this is a little bit more what we're used to seeing. Center Grove averaging 7.1 yards per carry with the running game tonight. Penalty against North Central. March it off five yards. Quarterback under distress, and he's going to get back across the original line of scrimmage. Great pursuit by the Trojan defense chasing down Austin Roberts. 
But once again, they're looking at third down and long. Looks like about nine. Seven yards for Roberts on the carry. Luck Green with the open field tackle for Center Grove. Luck Green, leading tackler coming into tonight's game for the Trojans, doing a fine job here in his senior season. And on the blitz, Connor oh, Steve. Fumble. And North Central got it back. Sandra went after it, but Connor Steve put the big hit on Austin Roberts, the quarterback. And Roberts a little slow getting back to his feet. Safety blitz, Ted. Yeah, it's about a 10 yard loss. It sticks them back in the end zone. Any win that we do have, he'll be kicking into it. Center Grove going to get outstanding field position once again. Robert Young punting from his own end zone right at the goal line. North Central quarterback not getting very much time. I and mean, Center Grove doing a nice job of really pressuring him and not giving him a, a chance to set his feet and look down the field. Steve at his own 50 or midfield. This will be the third punt of the night for Young. 43 yards on his first kick. one. 39 on his second one, and what do we have? Steve lost the football. Did they blow the whistle? Now they're going to blow the whistle dead here on the near side. Well, that's a fumble. They're going to blow the whistle, and uh, this referee here on the near side did blow his whistle, even though the North Central Panther player did. I think it was the it. guy in the middle of the field. He thought that it was just he was going to make the catch. I mean, you got to wait to blow the whistle until at least the guy makes the catch. But now they're having a discussion at midfield. But the, the referee here on the near side was waving his arms. And while the, the, the North Central player was was taking it. It's got to be North Central's zone. ball, though. So you might have an inadvertent whistle, which if that's the case, it should be blown dead right there at midfield. And it could be North Central's football. Yeah, you would think it's going to be North Central's football. Inadvertent oh, whistle my. by... The official here on the near side. Look Otherwise, at that coach on the other side. He is not happy, and if it was me, I would not be happy either. That is. They're going to replay it. They're going to do the play over. So I it mean, should have been a fumble and a return for a touchdown. Well, I, I don't know if he can return that. Can, you, 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 can, you can't return a muff. It's a muff. Yeah, it's called a muff punt. So, so then, but, he, but they would have had the football at the 50 yard line. And uh, I don't know what the official was thinking. I mean, you have to wait until the guy secures the football before you blow the whistle. Ted, those are kind of calls you get when you're at home, I guess, right? <laughs> Not on the road. Wow. Again, North Central looking for any kind of break, and they came up with a big one there, and it's taken away by the in inadvertent whistle. So they'll repunt it, and this time it hits the Center Grove Trojan player, it appeared, and the ball was live at the 45 in North Central. In result, they get it back. The ball, I believe it hit the back heel, was yeah, at number 21. At right take yeah. a look at Cole it. Cole Fresher. Yeah, we're not going to be able to see it. We Cole see it. Fresher. But the thing that tells you it hit somebody is you see the reaction from the Center Grove team. They knew it hit somebody. And they're trying, what, what, watch him run after it here. They know it hit somebody. Watch him right. Yeah. See, he knows it hit somebody. Yeah, Fresher had the ball hit him in the, the back of the foot. He just did not know the punt was near him. And uh, that's a live ball, and North Central recovers at the 45-yard line. That's where they'll take, take control of the football. 9-16 to play here in the second quarter. Center Grove in front, 14 to nothing. Center Grove rushing four. Quick screen pass, it is complete. Four to five yards that far sideline with the catch. Anthony Neal, junior, 5'11", 165 pound wide receiver, five yards for Neal. Neal was hammered out of bounds by three Trojans. They'll spot it at the Panther 49. I, I thought that they would be a team as much as they've thrown this year to throw the football down the field a little bit more here tonight. I mean, uh, they either have not thrown it and gotten sacked or they've just kind of thrown little screen passes. High snap, handoff, very close to a first down. I think he got it. Yeah, I think he got it. He got across the 45 to the 44, a five-yard He got a good, good push from his offensive lineman once he got moving that way. It was hard to bring him down, but... Uh, Milton McLean, he's their top runner. 5'10", 223 pounds, very powerful, very strong. 
It is a North Central first down. Roberts from the gun. Passes and completes. It's a high completion to Jared Clark, the senior wide receiver. He takes a big hit to the midsection, picks up five. Yeah, quarterback kind of hangs him out here, but you see good hands. I mean, he goes down a little curl route, throws, catches, secures the football, he gets hit. He's lucky he got his feet back on the ground before somebody comes in there and dumps you. With a nice tackle, Blake Moran, junior quarterback. 8.15 to play. First half, 14 nothing. Center Grove. North Central, though, putting together its best drive of the night. McLean dropped in the backfield by senior Luttgreen. Well, it's a good job by Center Grove. They're getting a lot of penetration, but just really a poor play. Watch how slow this is. I mean, fakes to the up back. Then it, I mean, Center Grove's already in there by that time. I mean, just not a very well planned out play call right there. Adam Luttgreen, 5'10", 190. Top tackler for the Trojans. Makes third it, and eight, yeah, third and eight. Makes it a long third and eight. Two receivers to each side. Take the handoff to McLean. He's throwing it over the top. He's got a man, led him too much. Got in behind Moran, looking for Jared Clark. Clark had a step on him. Yeah, he sure did. And uh, it was a pretty well thrown ball. It was only about a, a step too far. But Center Grove defense uh, has done a nice job forcing a fourth and eight right here. And this will be another in interesting decision. At some point in time, you're going to have to pick these up or you're going to have to go home a loser. Fourth and eight at the Trojan 43. They're going to line up to go for it. Three receivers here to the right, one to the left. McLean, your lone back in the backfield. From the gun, Roberts to Southpaw, drills it, and it's incomplete. He threw it behind his man. I don't know if it's a miscommunication, but uh, not close with the pass. Well, he was getting pressure from the Center Grove defensive line, and uh, he threw it just about a second quicker than he wanted to, and because of it, his receiver was not able to find the football. Center Grove defense holds, turnover on down. Center Grove will... Take possession with 7.23 to play in the second quarter. In front, 14 to nothing. Touchdowns by McCoy and Norris. Our second quarter being presented by Allstate Insurance, the Bond Trigger Agency of Greenwood. Taking a shot down Nobody. the middle of the field, wide Nobody. open. Calvin Daggett, he will score easily. Touchdown to Daggett. 57-yard touchdown pass by Siderwitz to Daggett. I mean, Joey Siderwitz has to look up and think, my God, there's nobody there's nobody within 10 yards of him. When he catches the football, he obviously tucks it away and runs another 20 yards for a touchdown. Eric Moore likes to, likes to hit you quick on a first down and 10 after a turnover or something like that with the pass. Great job by Joey. Great protection by the offensive line to let him step into the pass and may throw a strike down the field to Daggett. 57 yards on the pass play. Siderwitz with the hold. The kick by Snyder is good. 21 to nothing, Center Grove. Shooting off a lot of fireworks tonight here at Ray Skillman Stadium. Center Grove with its best offensive output, 21 points already in tonight's game. The previous best head was 14 against Carmel and 14 against Whiteland. Yeah, they've got 21 points and they still got seven minutes left here in the second quarter. So uh, I figured Eric had it pretty well focused after a, a you know good week of practice. You know, this is really a must win just because you need it mentally to get back headed in the right direction after playing really three tough conference foes, three, the, the three best teams in the state. Um, you know, I was surprised when I saw Center Grove had dropped all the way to, to ninth in the poll. I mean, how, how can you drop when you're playing one, two, and three? But uh, is what it is. But uh, not surprised by the effort and the execution put, put on out here tonight by Center Grove. 7-14 to play here in the opening half. Snyder with the approach. Again, great hang time and 
deep into the end zone for another touchback. Well done by the junior. Nice weapon to have. You got a kicker that can get it in the end zone. I mean, uh, especially against some of these teams that have speed and they don't get to use it because your kicker continues to put, put them back against the wall at the 20-yard line. Indiana's largest and most respected full-service sheet metal and custom metal crafter is Pointer Sheet Metal, soon moving from Bloomington to Greenwood. If you have a project in metal, big or small, look no further than Pointer Sheet Metal. Again, moving soon to the Greenwood area. North Central still trying to put things together here offensively. Quick screen pass in a Grove keeping the ball in front. Making the tackle is Zach Hart. He's had some great tackles already tonight for the Trojans. Completed pass and they lose four yards. So uh, Center Grove defense, they continue to throw that type of pass. They need to start throwing the football down the field if they're going to have any chance of winning this football game here tonight. Neal with the catch. Lost one, second and 11. The wide receiver don't know out there on the far left. Doesn't know if he's in the game or out of the game. He walked out of bounds and he walked back in. I, I can't believe he didn't get some type of a penalty, but he didn't. Fake the handoff. Pass is complete. Sinegro making the tackle at the 25-yard line. Well short of the first down. Five-yard yeah, game. On second and 12, Sinegro more than happy to give you five yards. I mean, uh, you know, they just want to make it a third down and you know tough situation so here you're looking at third down and about six six minutes remaining second quarter center grove in front 21 zip third and five here for the panthers roberts long signal count high snap He's able to handle it. Javon Swan is held. Otherwise, he gets the sack, and the flag is down. It'll be a hold against North Central. Again, Javon was in the backfield very quickly. I would think Eric would uh, accept this penalty, move him back 10 more yards. Sack Let's made by look at Cameron Tidd. If you keep the play, Tidd gets it's the it's sack, either fourth and it's fourth. And five. It's either fourth and five or third and about 20 or third and about 15 I guess it would be it will be declined so Cameron Tidd gets credit for the sack and oh we'll see the, the uh, yeah, hunting it is, unit it is fourth down excuse me I'm yeah sorry. so with the fourth down now for North Central we'll see Robert Young once again his fourth punt of the night Steve back at his own 45 yard line Good snap. High, but very, very short. Center Grove needs to get away from it. The side of his foot. Bounces sideways, and it'll be spotted at the North Central 43-yard line, only a 22-yard punt. Yeah, this is not a very good North Central team. I mean, they're not good at running the football. They're not good at passing the football. Uh, they don't kick it very well, and you wonder why they're 0-4. Uh, but it is a chance for center grove to gain a little confidence here tonight you know they've gotten beat up by three of the best teams in the state so they need something to give them a little confidence boost i think north central is the perfect thing to do that daggett behind his blockers to the 40. three yards for daggett five minutes to play here in the opening half Dad, you'll watch Daggett on the replay. Just did a good job staying behind his wall of blockers. Yeah, I saw him right there. He had his hand on, I think 55 was who was leading, and uh, he just kind of stays right in there behind him and kind of pushes him where he needs to push him and follows that block and able to pick up three yards. Player down for North Central. Looks like he's taking care of his left cleat, getting it retied. Halftime score. Carmel in front of Lawrence North, Ted, only 21 to 14. Wow. And in the second quarter, Ben Davis, 14, Warren Central, six. About ready for the double handoff here in a little bit. 
Max Norris pounds it to the 35. Physical blocking, physical running. Flare down for North Central. He's very slow to get to his feet. Ted, did 52 ever make it back point on Dexter the field? Again? I don't it's know. 50 it. something. I don't believe so. Eight, this is 58. 58. Yeah, I haven't seen point extra back. 58 is Walter Hare. He's a sophomore defensive lineman. I don't believe 52. Yeah, point is right here, Ted. I see him right there on the field. Oh, yeah, he's running to the sideline. Running to the sideline. Uh, he was laid out in the first quarter by Devin Hensley on one nasty block. Coming up at halftime, the Ray Skillman Automotive Group halftime show. We have invited a couple of guests, Ted, to join us at halftime. One of the all-time greats, Luke Calvert, of course, led the Trojans last year at that QB position last couple of years and took the Trojans and all the way to the Final Four, one game away from the state championship. But we'll visit with Luke Calvert now playing football at Anderson University. So we'll get caught up with Luke and how things are going for him. Also we invited to come up and join us at halftime, the girls soccer coach, Mike Bishop, off to a great start this year, 8-1-1 one and 5-0-1 one and oh and one in the conference. So hopefully we'll visit with Mike Bishop, the Center Grove girls soccer coach, coming up on the Ray Skillman Automotive Group halftime show. Back to action on third and short. Center Grove gets the first down. Titus McCoy haven't called his number for some time. It will be a Center Grove first down. Always ready and willing when his number is called, though. He can pick up tough yards. He can get outside. He's just an outstanding running back who's got a great future in front of him here at Center Grove. Rick King, senior linebacker at the bottom of that pile with the tackle. 415 and counting. New set of downs here for the Trojans. End around Calvin Daggett getting his number called quite a bit tonight. He's in the open field. He's inside the 15-yard line. Some well, nifty moves by the senior, Calvin Daggett. Yeah, some good blocking, and he uh, is patient. We've talked about his patience running. Take a look at him right here. He's coming, coming around. He's a good hole right there. He hits the hole hard. That outstanding run by Calvin Daggett. Good job by the offensive line of creating a hole there. Daggett's 57-yard touchdown reception. His first score of the season, so we're seeing McCoy, his first touchdown, and now Daggett, his first, first touchdown of the season. So the Trojans, again, 21 points on the scoreboard, the best scoring production of the season. Looking for more here late in the first half. Handoff goes to Titus McCoy, sprints it outside and tries to get it to the 10. He's going to be chopped down just shy of the 10-yard line. Great open field tackle made there on that far side by North Central. Yeah, North Central able to you know, spread it out right there to the – to the sideline. That's what we've seen Carmel and Warren and Ben Davis do and Center Grove not able to get outside yet tonight. They've been more apt to cut the cut it back rather than try to reach the corner. Plenty of time 315 and counting. Pick up a four yards on second and six. There's the double handoff. Calvin Daggett to the end zone. His first rushing touchdown of the season. 27 to nothing Trojans. Well, I, I said about three plays ago, it was about time for the double handoff. Usually they do it out towards more midfield, but they did it down here. And uh, offensive line, once again, makes the difference. When the offensive line controls the football game, it makes it easy for your runners to find holes and uh, get into that end zone. Looking to add on the extra point kick. Good. Snyder is good, 28 to nothing, Trojans. Ted, this is what Center Grove needed. You've alluded to it. Uh, just an opportunity to be physical. The blocking is very, very good tonight. And uh, we're seeing a lot of different players get an opportunity to run the ball tonight and also find the end zone. Well, I think you can learn a lot from uh, you know watching film and you know, losing to certain teams that are really, really good. But I always felt like it, it was a lot better learning as I was winning games rather than losing. Sure. So uh, I think this will, uh, you know, give them a little confidence going forward. I think I, I actually think they'll get on a pretty good run here and uh, they'll really feel good about themselves by the time they get to the state playoffs. 
Edmondson RV Sales, located just 20 minutes south of Indianapolis off exit 76B, one mile north of the Edinburgh Outlet Mall on U.S. Highway 31. It is a proud supporter of Trojan football, family-owned and operated for more than 17 years. They are a one-stop shop for the RV traveler. Edmondson RV offers complete sales and has a large indoor showroom for comfortable shopping. They also provide service and parts and all types of recreational vehicles. So Edmondson RV, friendly and professional staff, welcomes you and looks forward to taking care of all of your RV needs. Please give them this opportunity to earn your business. And Ted, I know you know the Edmondson family and they're great people. They are great people. They do a great job down there. Uh, at Edinburgh, I just saw uh, Mr. Edmo only lives about 10 houses from where, where we live, so I see him in and out there once in a while. But, yeah, great great family, great supporter of Center Grove football. Marine Center Boating Superstore is Indiana's most award-winning dealership. They've been named to Boating Industries' top 100 boat dealers in North America for the last 10 years. Marine Center Boating Superstore has more than 200 new and used boats in stock Plus, they have Indy's largest device department and the biggest parts and accessory store in the Midwest. Don't miss their fall boat sale with the lowest prices of the year. Marine Center is the only place to go for all your boating needs and is a proud supporter of Center Grove Trojan football. After the great kickoff by Snyder, the Panthers take control from their own 20. Hand off a couple of yards for North Central. Every time the center hikes the football to the to the quarterback, he hikes it high, and it takes about a half a second longer than it should to get it in his hands. And because of everything, it really slows everything down. Watch the snap here. See if he can able to get that. Was better. Better, much better. snap. Much better. And now the quarterback, after faking the pass, is going to run and try to get outside and center grove will pile him up at the 25 not much there austin roberts with the carry well center grove going to get the football back here unless something strange happens their defense uh, you know their offense has not been able to pick yardage up tonight and uh i would think center grove's looking to get this football back and hopefully score one more time javon swan led the attack for the trojans on the tackle Third and four at the North Central 26. Pass complete yeah, right at the marker. Jared Clark out of bounds, stops the clock with a minute 58. Clark's a senior. He knew how much he needed for the first down. Yeah, he got up to the chains, sat down right there, quarterback able to hit him, and now they get a new set of downs. With just under two minutes left in the half. At the Panther 32. Roberts looking left under pressure. Ball came out. Picked up by one of his linemen at the 20. And he's going to be dropped at the 20. That is Patrick Kelly. He's a senior at 5'9", 255 pounds. Well, they're fortunate they come <laughs> up with this. I think 52 is the one who missed the block. His guy gets the football, and then he ends up with the football, and he's going nowhere. So it's a huge loss. And now you would think Center Grove might start trying to take some timeouts here. I mean, there's still a minute 20. I'd at least make them punt the football. Gavin Everett with the tackle. Roberts floats it out there, complete to one of his top receivers, Robert Young, senior with the catch. Roberts doesn't zip it. He puts a, puts a little float on it. Easy to catch. Third down and 15. Derek Butler runs off to get a breather on that D line for Center Grove. Down to a minute 15. They're only rushing three, but they've been able to get tremendous pass, you know, pressure on the and quarterback. Devin Wilson nearly got a sack. It is a completed pass to McLean, well short of the first down. McLean with the catch. Taken down at the 36-yard line. You can see the quarterback's going to be under under dress right here. I mean, they're, they're only rushing three, but, wow, they're really fortunate that, that he was able to get that football off because uh, Center Grove had both hands on the quarterback right there. Devin Wilson, 5'11", 205-pound junior defensive end, nearly had him himself a, a, a sack on the play. Timeout called by Center Grove, stopping the clock with a minute nine. It is fourth and seven at the North Central 
35 yard line, forcing the uh, Panthers to, to punt. Well, this is one you, you, I mean, you have to know exactly, you know, they're gonna try to get just beyond the sticks probably and set down. So if you're a cornerback covering out there, you need to know that in your head. I mean, as long as you got somebody helping you backside, I mean, you can be a little bit more aggressive and try to run him off that route. But again, knowing the play, knowing the situation, just most importantly, you don't want to give up a big play. The Ray Skillman Automotive Group Halftime Show coming up in just a few minutes. Again, uh, we've invited Luke Calvert to join us at halftime, so we'll get caught up on Luke and how he's doing at Anderson University. Also, Mike Bishop, the head coach of the Senegal girls soccer team, also invited to join us at halftime. They're having a fabulous season. So we're gonna say Connor Spinney made the tackle for the Trojans on that last play. Young now sets up at his own 21 for the punt. Steve back inside his own 35 yard line. Good hang time for Young. Connor Steve will run away from it, let it bounce. It will roll to the 31 yard line. Not bad by Young on the punt. We'll see what Coach Moore and the Trojans elect to do with 58 seconds to play. Opening half in front, 28 to nothing. Ted, is this an opportunity to kind of run your two minute offense? Oh, definitely. I, I would think that uh, Eric, Eric is looking to score points right here. He wants to see how efficient they can be with the clock. I mean, obviously, every time you move the chains, the, the clock stops, so you don't have to call timeouts. They've got a couple timeouts, uh, one timeout left, I think. Man in motion, McCoy. Siderwitz going to take a shot, throwing it in the direction of Hensley. Hensley knocked down, flag comes out. Interference against North Central. Devin Hensley, your intended receiver. Look, it looks like the ball hits him right in the, in the chest. I mean, Devin was concentrating on getting by the defender, and he thought that he'd probably get a hand on it. But watch it, it looks like it hits him right in the chest. But anyway, they called the defender for, for grabbing. Now, in the pros, that's a spot penalty wherever it happens. But in high school and college football, it's only 15, 15 yards. Corey Stewart called for the infraction. He's a sophomore. They're going to get it at about the 48. 52 seconds to play. Plenty of time for the Trojans. They'll drop it at the 40, to around the 46-yard line. Wouldn't be surprised if they didn't throw like a little screen pass. I mean, get it, get it in uh, Max Norse's hands out in the open where he can, uh, you know, create things. After they've stretched the defense a little bit with the long pass right there, don't be surprised if they throw, throw something out in the flat. Siderwitz hands it off. Calvin Daggett flag down. This will come back. It'll be holding yeah, against Center Grove. Great run, though, by Daggett. He has looked fabulous tonight for Center Grove. Yep. Hold. Holding against the Trojans. So the 15 that you just picked up, now you're going to lose 10 of that. Couldn't quite pick up the uh, hold and the replay there. It'll be first down again for Center Grove. 45 seconds to play with. Still plenty of time for Center Grove to get in scoring position. Dead our boy, Rick Embry, here on Bantam night. He coaches what, one, two, maybe three teams? I can't keep up. <laughs> Well, he was down there early and walked through, and now he, he left us, and uh, he'll be down there walking through again. So He's getting quite the workout. They go right back to Daggett. Better job this time by North Central. They were able to wrap him up here in the open field. They drive him out of bounds, but uh, does not stop the clock. It continues to roll, 30 seconds and counting. Yeah, if, you, if you stop momentum inbounds, they let the ball, or they let the clock continue to run. Down to 20 seconds and I think, counting. I think Eric said that's, that's enough. We'll go into halftime. I don't think they're going to run another play. Yeah, Center Grove can let the clock run out and head into the halftime locker room in front of, tw of North Central. 28 to nothing. Center Grove looking for its first Mick win of the season. 
fabulous opening two quarters for the Center Grove Trojans. We'll take a break and be back with our Ray Skillman Automo- Automotive Group halftime show. This is Center Grove Trojan football. I'm your hot water heater. You hardly know I exist. That's too bad. Because if my pressure relief valve gets stuck... We hot water heaters can transform into rocket-propelled wrecking balls. And if you got the wrong home insurance coverage, it's your bank account that might explode. So get all state. Good hands, good home. Make sure you have the right home protection. Talk to an all state agent. Ray Skilm's got your truck, man. Big and little trucks, man. Into great locations, man. Skilm's got your truck, man. He's got SUVs, crossovers, long bed, short bed, flat bed, dumb cab, two cab, a center cab, half ton, three quarter ton, one ton, high cube band, cargo band, diesel engine, gas in the stock. The custom in the color you want, man. Ray Skilm's got your truck, man. Big and little trucks, man. Into great locations, man. Skilm's got your truck, man. Ray Skilm's got your truck, man. Hi, I'm Mark Lender. And I'm Tiffany McClurg with the Lender McClurg team at Remax Select. We would like to say thank you for making us Center Grove's go-to real estate team year after year. We take great pride in supporting and giving back to our community. Throughout the years, we have supported many blood drives, fundraisers, and have been named a top donator for Riley Children's Hospital. We are super excited to be a top sponsor for Center Grove football this year. Remember, when buying, selling, or building, please remember to call the Linder McClurg team. Go Trojans! Trojans. There's no difference in the quality of food you buy at other stores and the food you buy at Aldi. Except when you shop at Aldi, you'll have a lot more bucks left over when you leave. At Aldi, you'll keep more bucks every time you shop, and that's the truth. Aldi, simply smarter shopping. Center Grove Trojans with their best offensive production of the season, leading 28 to nothing over the North Central Panthers. We welcome you to the Ray Skillman Automotive Group Halftime Show. Ray Skillman, a proud supporter of Trojan football. Ray Skillman, where we stack them deep and sell them cheap. And our first guest tonight here on our halftime show, the head coach of the Center Grove Girls Soccer Program, Mike Bishop. His team ranked number nine in the state of Indiana in Class 2A. And their record right now, 8-1-1 one, and 5-0-1 one, and oh, and one in the conference. And, Coach, first of all, off to a fantastic start. Uh, great job to your team so far. Yeah, thank you. It's been a, it's been a great season so far. A little ups and downs, but uh, we've overcome them. And uh, look forward to a couple of good hard matches coming up. I will say you're right in the thick of things as far as the, the conference championship is concerned. Of course, this past week, Coach Todd Sheely and the, the boys team won the conference championship. So congratulations to Todd. But uh, you guys are right there, too. Yeah, we, uh, we've got one tie so far in the MIC against Warren Central. And we have our last uh, conference game against uh, Carmel here in a couple of weeks. So for all the marbles, it should be a good show. Yeah, I was going to say, Coach, uh, is that one going to be here or there? That's a way. That will yeah. be there. Yeah, and they'll be fired up. It's their senior night, so it'll be a fun test. Tell us about uh, your season so far. I know you said there's been some ups and downs. Uh, a lot of ups, though, because only one loss and the one tie. But uh, just tell us about some of your senior leaders and who's been playing well for you this year. Oh, well, let's see. Brittany Gilbert is uh, one of our starting center attacking mids. been playing very well. Uh, battling through some nicks and dings, but uh, – you know, leading the team very well, one of our team captains. Another senior, Desi Golden. She uh, Actually, she'll be signing uh, her uh, letter at, uh, I think, St. Catharines out in Kentucky on Monday night. Um, doing very well. And Amber Perry holding the defense in the center mid as well. And, you know, you can't forget Aaron Sutton. You can't forget Hannah Johnson either. The, the big offensive production for us. You know, say, I've seen uh, Hannah lately getting the, the hat trick, if you will, a couple of times. I think she scored three goals for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She, she gave, me, gave me a look when I pulled her off. I figured I called off the dogs a little bit. She looked at me. I was like, well, I'll put her back in at some point. But what a cool off a little bit. But, yeah, it did very well. 
just talk about your program in general as far as what it takes to, to keep it going from year to year and just uh, the, you know you guys play it at such a high level I mean last year you were what one game away from going to the state championship correct yeah uh, one goal away actually yeah. um, so if you look at it maybe half you know 40 minutes 30 minutes um, you know it just takes dedication it takes a lot of hard work and you know to make it that far obviously and then to get through that match and to get into the state finals takes a little luck involved as well you know a good kind bounce here there never hurts but you know I think the the young kids see the older kids going through it see how to how things are done how you know, what's expected and uh, you know they just kind of keep learning and growing so each year they get stronger and better and then the next group down the road will come up and do the same I uh, know Avon won it last year. I think that's the team that puts you out. I assume they're the, still the team to beat? I don't know. Uh, you've got uh, Carmel beat them, so Carmel's now number one. Uh, who else do you have up there? Zionsville, although I hear they're kind of nicked and ding, but still very competitive, very tough. Um, How about through the south bracket? Uh, through the south, um, you, you've got the Columbus schools. You're still pretty strong. You've got... Evansville, you yeah. know, you always got that fight with Memorial and I, uh, Evansville North, I hear, is, is the stronger team, according to what I've heard from some of the coaches. So we look forward to see what they can uh, put up against us as we get moving on through the tournament. Coach, as you go down the, the final stretch here of the season, what do you want to see from your team before you head into that state tournament? Uh, I want to see them playing good team soccer. Yeah. You know, I, you, want your, you want your stars to shine and you want your role players to do their job and you want – you know the bench players to come off and everybody be productive and be strong so everybody's peaking at, at the tournament time so that's what i look forward to all right coach bishop we appreciate your time here at halftime and uh, best of luck rest of the season especially in that state tournament thank you very much all right mike bishop the head coach of the Senegal girls soccer program kind enough to join us here at halftime his squad again number nine in the state in class 2a eight one and one overall and five oh and one in the mix still a chance to to win a mick championship here at halftime, the Center Grove Trojans uh, leading North Central 28 to nothing. We'll take a break, and after the break, we'll be back with former Center Grove Trojan great Luke Calvert. Get caught up with Luke and see how things are going for him at Anderson University. This is Center Grove Trojan football. I'm your hot water heater. You hardly know I exist. That's too bad. Because if my pressure relief valve gets stuck. We hot water heaters can transform into rocket propelled wrecking balls. And if you got the wrong home insurance coverage, it's your bank account that might explode. So get all state. Good hands, good home. Make sure you have the right home protection. Talk to an all state agent. Ray Skim's got your truck, man, big and little trucks, man, into great locations, man. Skim's got your truck, man. He's got SUVs, crossovers, long bed, short bed, flat bed, dump care, two cab, a center cab, half ton, three quarter ton, one ton, high Q band, cargo band, diesel engine, gas in the stock. The custom and the color you want, man. Ray Skim's got your truck, man, big and little trucks, man, into great locations, man. Skim's got your truck, man. Ray Skim's got your truck, man. Welcome back to Ray Skillman Stadium. Kevin Conrad with you here on the Ray Skillman Automotive Group Halftime Show. Ray Skillman where we stack them deep and sell them cheap. And now special guest Luke Calvert joins us here at halftime. And uh, Luke, I'm not for sure if you've had a chance to see the Trojans firsthand, but uh, first half looked pretty impressive putting up 28 points. It, it did indeed. And I wish I could uh, you know, come out here a little, a little bit more, but I'm obviously playing my own games at Anderson University. But yeah, they, they look really impressive. I, I love the throw by uh, the Joey. Uh, there, it just kind of makes me smile. That backside post is, is something I always look for. And then he hit it for about 50 yard touchdowns. That's awesome. How about your 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 top receiver last year, Devin Hensley, a turn blocker? Oh my gosh! In that first quarter, did he blow up the uh, linebacker for North Central? I, I knew he had some good hands, but I did not know he could lay the wood like he did there. That was awesome. Well, let's uh, get caught up with Luke Calvert. Uh, Luke, uh, you're at Anderson University playing quarterback, and unfortunately, this past weekend uh, suffered an injury. Get our uh, Trojan fans up today on your injury. Yeah. Um Playing a, we played a pretty solid game. Uh, fourth quarter came around, and of course, it happened on the very last drive of the game. 
Um, and we lost to 23-18, but um, I stepped up in the pocket. Defense Ben kind of rolled around and stepped up, and um, he hit me from the backside. I just landed right on my right on my left elbow, and I uh, broke my left clavicle. And so I had surgery just yesterday, actually, and so um, that will be a season-ending ending injury, but I'll be looking forward to next season and, and getting back with it. And Goodness, coming here doesn't help me uh, miss the <laughs> – with the whole football thing, it just makes me want to get out there even more. I will say, uh, Luke, was this your first collegiate game? Uh, it was my first collegiate game that I started, and so um, it's a little unfortunate. Not the best way to start your college career, but hey, that's all right. I will say, I got some numbers. You had some pretty good numbers in this game. You were 34 of 51 passing, 291 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and uh, so you had obviously we're, we're playing well mm -hmm. uh, uh, for your first outing and uh, just tell us a little bit about the, the change between Center Grove High School football playing in the MIC which obviously is one of the best in the state if not the best maybe in Midwest some say maybe in the nation mm -hmm. but uh, now going to Anderson just tell us a little bit about the difference. Um, Anderson is a, is a D3 college so um, the step is not anywhere it would be from a D1 to from high school but it's still it's still bigger players older players you know, um, people who have been in the game a little bit longer, and, and I do, I do believe that's where this injury came from. Is, is some 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 linebackers and some defensive ends that I had seen, you know, size-wise here, but it was consistent there. And so um, the game's a little, little quicker, quicker as well. And um, but I went to Center Grove. We we're a 6A school. It, it it definitely set me up for a lot of success um, in the D3 football game. Look, obviously you're not far removed from last season, but just look back over your time at Center Grove. You got a chance to be the, the quarterback for two seasons, your junior and senior year. You set a lot of records last year. Got a chance to go to the Final Four, uh, one game away from a state championship, and uh, just reflect on your time here at Center Grove. It's, it, it's, it's so hard because not a, lot of, not a lot of players get to play for Coach Moore, and they don't know what it really is like to play for Coach Moore. And, um, it was a blessing. It was such a blessing from, I mean, even from second grade, kindergarten, you know, with flag, you, you always see Coach Moore out there, and that's all you want to do growing up as a football player. You just want to be a Center Grove High School football player and play for play for Coach Moore. And he, he made the dream come true for a lot of us. And, and I'm very lucky that I got to play quarterback here. And those records or whatever doesn't, doesn't really mean too much to me. It just means that I got to play Center Grove football at a, at a very high level. And um, the seniors last year, um, we were devoted to, to, to making sure that, that that number 12 jersey for Tyler Jenikin, um, that was one of our most important things that, to get across to any other team, to get across to our fans was, you know, we were playing for each other, of course, but we were also playing for, for number 12. And um, I don't know if I'll ever get to experience something like that again, the, the camaraderie that we had and the, just the oneness that we had um, as a team. And Coach Moore just, he just he made things happen, and he definitely made that happen for us. He said, if this is going to be important to you guys, it's going to be very important to me. Um, I mean, s some tears shed from game one to, to the last game. I mean, we, I loved every second of, of playing here. Also, Luke, throughout the, the journey, if you will, through your high school career, I do I believe it was your sophomore year when you had the knee injury. So you've had the struggles with injuries, the, the ups and downs, and and you, it's a lot of life lessons that are learned when you play football, especially here uh, for Coach Moore and the Center Grove Trojan program. Uh, again, there's a lot of expectations to perform at a very, very high level. But uh, sometimes you got to go through the struggle to get to the other side where you see the success. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, actually, I, I had a, a knee surgery freshman and sophomore year. And so, you know, your hopes and dreams of, of getting to play, it, I thought they were going to slip away from me for a little bit. Um, but I'm not going to lie. But – there's nothing like Coach Mills' lifting program along with Coach Moore running program to get you back in perfect shape, ready to go for the season. And there you will have some ups and downs and, oh, I didn't get to play this game or I didn't get to start this game or whatever. But Coach Moore, does, he does have the, the next man up mentality. You know, if, if somebody's ankles hurt or somebody, you know, tore up their, their ACL or something like that, he does, he's going to put you in with all confidence. And so that's what made me believe that I could be a Center Grove player and start here because he wasn't ever, oh, well, we may need to find somebody else. He's like, no, we're going to get you ready um, to play your junior year and, and start and, and be the quarterback. And, and w with that confidence, it's just unprecedented. As such a high school um, awesome pro program that we have here with the tradition that Cinder Grove has, and it, you can attribute to all Coach Moore. He really, really can. 
I would say, Luke, to start this season, obviously the schedule was brutal when you're talking about mm-hmm. Warren Central, Carmel, and Ben Davis, teams that are not only ranked in the state of Indiana, but in the Midwest and nationally. And Senegal very competitive in two out of the three games. And for a half last week, they were very competitive against Ben Davis. But again, when you got new guys up front on the offensive line, it is not easy to learn scheme and things of that nature against caliber of teams they were facing the first three or four weeks but uh, I feel like with this team they are progressing with each and every week and uh, that's what's great about coach Moore and his staff they stick with it they stick with their players and they do improve from week to week and I think at this point for the Center Grove Trojans obviously the Mick probably not going to happen this year but uh, got to be healthy and ready to go for that state tournament that big run at the end mm. that's a beautifully that's a beautiful thing about Mick football is everybody's going to the playoffs and and, and all all we're doing is setting ourselves up with success. We're understanding, okay, what, what Ben Davis beat us at, what our weakness weaknesses. Um, we're playing 6A football with some of the best teams in the country of high school. I don't don't look at Center Grove's record. Look at the the unbelievable talent they do have on the team. And you, like you said, O line is one of the hardest positions to play in all of football, especially when you're young, and especially when um, you have, don't have the experience like we had last year. And so, um, that, but that'll, game eight, that, that, that'll experience come. Game nine, the experience will be there. And, and then to set yourself up for a big run for the state tournament. Luke, Luke uh, besides football, I'll let you go here in just a moment. Tell us about you know, the, the campus life at Anderson and the academic life and how that's going for you. Um, th- it's actually a pretty big deal um, why I, do, I did attend Anderson University is because a lot of people were a- questioning my judgment. Uh, because they thought that I could go play D2, D2 football or uh, maybe at Liberty, D1, uh, AA. And um, I, I went there for the Christ- Christian atmosphere. And, and I've got exactly what I, what I hoped and dreamed for. And uh, I do want to be a pastor. And so um, the Christian ministries program there is top notch. And I'm loving every second of it on campus. And if uh, there's a lot of people that say, well, I'm not a Christian, so I shouldn't go to Anderson. That's exactly not, uh, that's the opposite of what AU is all about. And um, they welcome you. They welcome anybody in, and, and I just love the, the community I, I get to have there. And playing football is just a bonus. You know, I get to go there and learn about the Bible and learn um, how to be a pastor and get to play football. That's a dream come true for me. And so um, I do not question my judgment whatsoever. Um, this little injury, uh, it's not going to stop me from playing or anything like that. Um, but it's, it really has been a dream to come true to go to AU. Center Grove, great. Hard to believe. Former Center Grove football player. It doesn't sound right, does it? It does not sound right. <laughs> hey, Luke Howard, great to get caught up, spend some time with you here at halftime. Uh, sorry to hear about the injury, but I'm glad the surgery went well. Mm. Best of luck with the healing process, and I know you'll be back at it as soon as possible. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Luke Howard, everybody, join us here at halftime. Appreciate his time. and. Uh, Again, we wish him all the best at Anderson University. Again, this is the Ray Skillman Automotive Group Halftime Show. The Center Grove Trojans lead North Central 28 to nothing. Uh, Center Grove with its best uh, opening half in conference play this season. Overall, best half of football. So, again, uh, Center Grove doing a fine job finding the end zone four times here in this opening uh, two quarters. What we'll do, we'll take a break, and then we'll get you ready for the second half. This is... Center Grove football. I'm your hot water heater. You hardly know I exist. That's too bad. Because if my pressure relief valve gets stuck, We hot water heaters can transform into rocket-propelled wrecking balls. And if you got the wrong home insurance coverage, it's your bank account that might explode. So get all state. Good hands, good home. Make sure you have the right home protection. Talk to an all state agent. Ray Skillman's got your truck, man. Big and little trucks, man. Into great locations, man. Skillman's got your truck, man. He's got SUVs, crossovers, long bed, short bed, flat bed, dunk cab, two cabs, in the cab, half ton, three quarter ton, one ton, high cube, band, cargo van, diesel, engine, gas in the stock. A custom in the color you want, man. Ray Skillman's got your truck, man. Big and little trucks, man. Into great locations, man. Skillman's got your truck, man. Ray Skillman's got your truck, man. Hi, I'm Mark 
Lender. And I'm Tiffany McClurg with the Lender McClurg team at Remax Select. We would like to say thank you for making us Center Grove's go-to real estate team year after year. We take great pride in supporting and giving back to our community. Throughout the years, we have supported many blood drives, fundraisers, and have been named a top donator for Riley Children's Hospital. We are super excited to be a top sponsor for Center Grove football this year. Remember, when buying, selling, or building, please remember to call the Linder McClurg team. Go Trojans! Trojans. Welcome back to Ray Skillman Stadium. Kevin Conrad along with Rick Embry. Ted Kitchell had to hit the road early tonight. He is headed south. So Rick Embry will join us here for the second half. The Center Grove Trojans enjoying a 28 to nothing lead here at halftime over the North Central Panthers. And our third quarter tonight being presented by Remax. Did you know that no other Remax agent in the world sells more real estate in Center Grove than Mark Linder and Tiffany? McClurg with the Linder McClurg team. Year after year, they consistently rank in the top 50 of the nearly 5,000 agents in the Metro Indy market. Mark Linder and Tiffany McClurg would like to say thank you for making them the number one REMAX team in Center Grove. And Rick Embry, very impressive opening half for the Center Grove Trojans. Uh, really sharing the wealth. Uh, Tynus McCoy, first touchdown of the season. Max Norris, he scored a, a, a touchdown. You also saw Calvin Daggett uh, with a 57-yard touchdown reception so a lot of different guys getting involved here in the first half and Daggett also with a rushing touchdown. Yeah if you look at the stats Kevin very balanced across the board rushing wise Daggett's leading rusher with 67 yards Titus McCoy with 66 Max Norris with 42 and then you go down to receiving yards and Daggett's got that big 57 yard touchdown catch on, on the reception side and then Norris has got another 29 yards as well so uh Great balance between those three guys. It's exactly what Ted talked about at the start of the game. You know, you look on paper and see North Central's 0-4, Center Grove's 1-3, uh, but Center Grove's played the top three teams in the state of Indiana. So you kind of want to come in here, you want to take care of business, but you also want to develop a little bit of confidence. I mean, I think Coach Moore is talking about, you know, everybody, everybody thinks, hey, Center Grove, with the success we've had every year, uh, we should be able to just be 4-0 every year, and it's so difficult in the mix to be able to do that. And uh, he just wanted, uh, in the paper this morning, he talked about this, was, this week was all about his guys, all about his program, his team. They didn't focus on North Central. They didn't focus on the opponent. They focused on what they do and to try to get better during the course of a week. And, and they definitely come out this first half and, uh, and dominate. <laughs> We're ready for the second half. Center Grove will kick off to begin the second half. Snyder's been very effective all night long, all season long with the, the kickoffs. I believe all but two have gone to the end zone this season. And out of those two that did not go, one of them I think was a planned sky kick. So uh, he has done very, very well for the Center Grove Trojans. Well, that makes a big difference too because it makes the uh, obviously makes the offense drive 80 yards instead of you know, even shorten the field by by five or ten yards makes a big difference when you get down into the red zone. So uh, quite an effective weapon for Center Grove. New rule this year. You can only be about, what, five yards back on kickoffs. Trying to minimize injury on the uh, kickoffs. Snyder's kickoff once again to the end zone. This time goes a couple of yards deep. So North Central will have the football from its own 20, trailing 28 to nothing to begin the second half. Talked about what a discrepancy it was in total yards at, uh, at halftime. Center Grove had 268 yards and, and North Central had 35. And I think uh, 10 or 15 of those were on that last, that last drive when they, got, when they got a first down. So uh, Center Grove's defense has been dominant from the start up front with, with Swan and and uh, Cameron Tidd and, and Everett up front, and then those linebackers have been outstanding as well with Sodrell and, and Lutgren leading the group. To begin the second half at the moment. Different quarterback. Different quarterback, Roy Thurman. He's a sophomore at 5'10", 190 pounds. And the other big difference is he goes under center and now it's gonna be delay of game against North Central. Not a good start for uh, for the backup quarterback. He's only thrown six times this entire year, Kevin, so he's one for six for the year. Passing the ball and rushing the ball, he's uh, 
three attempts for minus three yards, so he obviously hasn't seen much time. You wonder if, if they want to get him some experience or if Roberts uh, took a hit in the first half. So a five-yard penalty. Fumble. Fumble. Fumble on the carry. Coach Moore is saying, let's go offense. Coach Moore is asking for the offense. Nope. But the official says <laughs> something different. He tried. <laughs> yeah, I can hear Coach Moore from here saying, offense, offense. I mean, most of the time you have to look at the defensive players. If they're going nuts and pointing that way, that's uh, that's a pretty good indication. If they're not, if they're pretty quiet and their hands are down at their side, that probably means they didn't get on it. Loss of yardage. Actually, they get one yard. I'm sorry. One yard on the play. Second and 14. And now the split in. Jared Clark takes off too soon. And that's what happens when you change up your quarterbacks. I'm sure Thurman has a different signal call or cadence than uh, the, the starter Roberts. Well, and that's what, you know, you see so many college offenses and, and now high school offenses doing that where it looks like they're getting a shotgun snap and then they stand up and the whole offense turns around and looks at the at the sideline to get the play. And, you know, you got a different guy now. You got a guy underneath the center and uh, in a little confusion at the moment. So with the penalty, second down and 19 yards to go for North Central. And now Thurman under major pressure. That's he is sacked. And they're going to yep. say safety. Devin Wilson with the tackle. He gets credit for the safety. Devin Wilson, defensive end. He's number three for the Center Grove Trojans. Well done, Devin. Yeah, if you look at the replay as well, it looked like he was probably going to be stopped at the one-yard line or forward progress on the one, but then he kind of slipped away a little bit, but then got into the end zone, and Wilson was able to grab his jersey and, and uh, sling him to the ground and pick up the safety for Center Grove. Center Grove leads it 30 to nothing. 11-22 to play here in the third quarter. Devin Wilson, the sack gets credit for the safety. Yeah, and that 35 yards total offense is now cut in half because they're uh, minus 20 in this in this quarter. So uh, it's down to 15 yards of total offense for North Central. But good pressure up uh, on the side and. Uh, Obviously, the, the guys on the front line, the defensive linemen, get credit for that, but that doesn't happen unless you got good coverage in the secondary by the Center Grove secondary. Again, special thanks to Teddy's Burger Joint for supplying our pregame meal. Rick, what did you go with again tonight? I went with the tenderloin again. I mean, uh, can't Kit go wrong. That's right. Kitchell said I, I led you guys to the uh, to the promised land with that tenderloin, and it's uh, it's fantastic. About the only thing that we need to do on that is probably get a second bun, because that thing is so big that you can make another sandwich and take that home and warm it up later or whatever. But uh, it's a great, great sandwich. Robert Young will punt it from his own twenty. Taking at the forty-one yard line. Holt. Holt Trevor. with a nice return. Trevor Holt still on his feet, fighting for every yard. Gets it to the 42-yard line. Well done by the sophomore, Trevor Holt. Yeah, I think he got picked up about 20 yards on that return, and uh, Center Grove takes over in, in uh, fantastic field condition. Teddy's Burger Joint located on Southport Road, just off State Road one or 37, I should say, State Road 37. Locally owned and operated by a team of Southsiders. Kids can play in the chalk room, arcade, sandbox, live music on the weekends with a nice outdoor patio. Teddy's Burger Joint believes in two things, burgers and happiness. Timeout called by North Central. 11-14 to play here in the third quarter. Center Grove on the scoreboard here in the third with a safety in front, 30 to nothing now with the football offensively for the first time here in the second half. In that close uh, that close game at uh, Carmel Lawrence North that was 14-14 halfway through the second quarter is now uh, Carmel 42, Lawrence North 14. Special thanks to Dr. Jim Heck of the White River Family Dental for being our instant replay sponsor this season, really stepping up really has added a lot to our webcast this year at the ability to, to do the instant replay. So a big thank you to Dr. Jim Heck and the 
great people at White River Family Dental. Check them out online at GreenwoodCosmeticDentist.com. We're ready for action. Joey Siderwitz, touchdown pass in the first half to Calvin Daggett and first run of the second half going right back to Calvin Daggett. He's in the open field. He's inside the five oh. and chopped down at the five. Yep. And it's going to be a do that. penalty against Daggett. You cannot hurdle a player because they do not want the offensive player to risk injury. So I believe it will be tacked on at the end of the play. Yep. There's another penalty yep. back here at around the 14-yard line. So we may have two different fouls on the play. Still fantastic run by Daggett. Yeah, it was a fantastic run, and I think he uh, – he was just trying to get in the end zone, and the defender was going low, and he just decided to try to jump over him. And like you said, a new rule in high school to uh, to prevent kind of what happened there. He kind of got upended and landed pretty awkwardly on his on his back or his or his hip. So uh, that's what that's put in there. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see where the other penalty is as well down the field. Thirty-seven yard run at the moment for Daggett. They're still discussing the penalty. They're talking with the defensive captain for North Central. So this. Obviously going against Center Grove. Block in the back against Center Grove. Personal foul hurdling. Hurdling. So they're going to take the uh, block in the back yeah. spot foul? Because that will take them back to about the 24. And the hurdling probably with 15 yards from the four would only take them to the 19. Another great run by Daggett. A couple so, cutbacks. Once they put the ball down, we'll see where they're going to spot it. Still got pretty good yardage. Spotted at the 23-yard line. First down for the Center Grove Trojans. Daggett's been very effective tonight. A lot of touches tonight for the senior, Calvin Daggett. Well, and that's good to see because uh, to the to date so far, it's kind of been Norris and McCoy have been the main two guys, and it's good to see a third guy. There's a holding. Siderwitz. And that's a, probably a penalty right there, too. Threw yep. it away. There's going to be, should be a holding on the play, and Siderwitz and then was slammed rat. down. Yep. And there's going to be a penalty against the North Central defender. Siderwitz, real slow to get back to his feet. He may have maybe got the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, he definitely got. Uh, I mean, that was an easy one for the official to, to do. The guy picked him up, as you can see right here, and then just body slammed him. So I'm sure he got hit in the midsection and probably knocked the knocked the air out of him. So if you have holding and a personal foul, do they offset? I believe they offset. So they offset and do the play over, do the down over? Yeah, offsetting foul, so they'll replay the down. So it's like it never happened, Kevin. That'll be interesting to see if uh, how many more times they uh, they get Joy back in the in the pocket there with being up by 30 points and stuff. They're probably and it'll be interesting to see how much longer the starters will actually be in there before Coach Morris to, um, get some to get some action for the backups. First and ten at the 23-yard line, handoff, Titus McCoy and. Great job, great run support by North Central with the initial hit and tackle. That's going to be Xavier Colvin. He's their leading tackler, and the Center Grove uh, offensive line not opening holes here the last couple of plays or protecting uh, Siderwitz. Well, that was a good job. Colvin just slipped past the the offensive lineman that, uh, yeah, another injured North Central Colvin, guy. Colvin, that's Colvin. It looks like he's got a cramp. Could be a cramp. Yeah, they're going to stretch him out that left leg. I think Siderwitz uh, on this timeout, you can see him, his helmet's off. He's still trying to catch his breath. I'm yeah. just wondering if he got the wind knocked out of him. Trainer Dave out there talking to him. Good time for the Trojans to get a break here. Second and 12 will be the call. Ten and a half minutes to play here in the uh, third quarter. First drive for the Center Grove Trojans here in the second half. They have two points on a safety. 
you mentioned earlier to, to in the broadcast, Kevin, what a fantastic broadcast or what a fantastic crowd there is here tonight. And uh, it, it's great to see all of the kids out here. And what most importantly, um, as we were waiting in line there to uh, to come out before the game and you had the flag players and the minor players is, is Coach Moore. Uh, walked by all of those kids, gave them five, told them good luck tomorrow, told them to play hard, and and that's the main reason why he has a program like he does. He's figured out, obviously, how you get those kids involved and having fun and playing football and everything else, and that's why you get the crowd that you get um, at, at a football game at Center Grove and, and how he how much he's turned things around in the, in the 13, 14 years he's been here. Center Grove breaks huddle, second and 12. 10.32 to play in the third. At the North Central 25. Hand off Max Norris. Trying to get outside, trying to get a block on the edge and Norris uh, leaps in the air and I don't believe he hurtled over a defensive player. He just jumped in the air and he gets it to the 20, five-yard pickup. So that's probably why there was no penalty Let's that watch time. This. He, man, I, I don't know how you don't call that, and you called the one earlier. I, obviously, Daggett's was. I mean, he tried to hurdle him, but so did so did Norris yeah. right here. Yeah, yeah, he was hurdling. <laughs> don't know. We'll take it. Third and seven. Left yep. side took off too soon. Left Man, tackle. That's a shame too because there was a big hole over there. Clay Hadley took off a little bit too soon. Sophomore. All of a sudden, a little sloppiness by the Center Grove Trojans. Yeah, that's hard to remain focused, and, uh, and I'm sure uh, Coach Moore's preach that at halftime that hey guys this game's not over let's not get sloppy let's not get people hurt um, you just come out and be effective and be efficient in the second half double handoff here comes Calvin Daggett and uh, he falls down oh, just shy of the 15 yard line went to make a cut yep. and just went down well and he basically was trying to read that that block by Hensley Hensley had his guy pinned and, and uh, Daggett was just trying to figure out as you can see which way he was going to cut and uh when he went to make that cut, he slipped, and that's unfortunate because he would clearly had enough for the first down, and now instead it'll bring up fourth and fourth and about four. Dag is limping a little bit too. Yeah, I felt like he he fell awkwardly on that play. Siderwitz fakes the handoff, Norris. rolls to his right. Now oh. going to run the football, looking for the first down. He's got the first down and runs out of bounds at the six. Well what, done by the junior quarterback. You're exactly right. And, and, you know, Kevin, Ted talked about this a lot last week is getting Joy in better situations to utilize his talents. And, you know, he is a, he's a lightning fast runner. He's obviously uh, um, uh, good speed, great speed at, at the quarterback position. So you get him out in the, uh, on the bootlegs and, and out in the open there, and that gives an option for him to run the ball in addition to throwing pass. From the six, first and goal, touchdown. Calvin Daggett. Third touchdown of the night for Calvin Daggett. Six-yard run by Daggett. 36-0, all center grove. Great blocking once again up front by the center grove Trojans, opening up a big hole for Calvin Daggett, his second rushing touchdown of the night. Had a big reception for a score in the first half. Whistles before the snap of the football against North Central. I was going to say, they're signaling offside, so why did they blow it dead? Let the play continue. But the snap came back a little low. I believe Snyder hit the PAT kick, even though it was a little bit low coming out on the kick. 
<laughs> Joey, Joey did a pretty good job to get it down. Yeah, and I think Coach Moore is asking that same question. He's like, why did you blow that dead when it's offside? Unless the only time that they usually blow that dead is if he's, you know, got a clear shot on the quarterback or a clear shot, in this case, on the kicker and stuff. So it's a little bit closer. Ooh. And the wow. kick is good. He kicked the line drive, but uh, not the prettiest of kicks, but Snyder puts it through, makes it now a 37-0 ball game, Center Grove. The way that was hooking, it almost looked like it was going to end up hitting Vandy. The Vandy gym. Another great look at the touchdown run by Calvin Daggett. Just a good job and a good cutback, but like you said, that all starts up front with those guys on the offensive line. They're able to, to make holes and, and uh, makes it easy as a running back to make your make your cuts. Roofing made easy. A proud supporter of Center Grove Trojan football, David Moreau's the owner. Great, great, great guy. Did a great job on my roof and uh, painted my trim this past summer. Fabulous job. Just give David a call, 317-372-6233. Again, 317-372-6233. Mention that uh, you heard this advertisement on the Center Grove football broadcast, and he'll give you a discount toward your next roof. So, roofing made easy. Most importantly, why did you not have one or more of your three sons out there doing that, Kevin, getting the painting <laughs> done? Probably the same reason why my three sons I wouldn't trust anywhere near painting paint my house. I'm lucky if one of them might mow the grass <laughs> <laughs> or take out the garbage. I'm still working on some of that. Another high kick by Snyder. Goes four yards deep in the end zone for a touchback. There's the question, though. Is Snyder's leg going to get too tired where he's not going to be able to get it to the end zone? That's, uh, that's, what, five on the day so far? Yeah, I'm trying to find my son on the sideline. He's... M MIA <laughs> for the night. He has yet to yeah. punt any. I don't know. We'll see here in the second half. He's got to stay loose just in case. Yeah, that's uh, that's not a bad thing when you don't, even though, you know, we love your son and all, Kevin, and <laughs> yeah. you like to watch him play oh, and no. punt. Yeah. But uh, anytime you don't see the punter, that's, that's, a, a, that's a good yeah. thing. It's a good sign for the offense. So I'm during warm-ups at halftime. That's good enough. <laughs> there you go. Rick, quarterback for North Central. Looks like they've gone back to who? Number 12. They're yep. going to stick with Roy Thurman. He's a sophomore. and Nowhere running, to go up Yeah, front. running play. Center Grove doing a good job clogging the holes. Cameron Tidd gets credit for the tackle. Milton McLean had no, uh, no uh, lane to run through. He just met the big fella, Cameron Tidd. Cameron Tidd, big number 89. 250 pounds on that six foot three frame. One of the top tacklers this season for the Trojans. He's played well after playing the wow. last year as a oh. tight end, being switched over to defensive line, and the quarterback runs it, trying to find some positive yards. Well, that was extremely fortunate because busted play. He turned the wrong way. Guy wasn't there. He got nailed, and he happened to flip it to the running back who. Uh, was actually able to pick up about three yards, but very dangerous play that very easily could have been fumbled and uh, returned for a score by Center Grove. Again, our third quarter being presented by Remax, the great team of Mark Linder and Tiffany McClurg. We really appreciate them sponsoring our webcast this season. On third and nine, trying to go over the top, we have an flag down interference going to be called against look like Jackson Holt on the coverage a couple of flags down yeah Jackson got caught a little no man's land right there that kind of uh, wide receiver turned twice to turn and look for the ball and the ball really wasn't that close but uh, Holt came up to make a play and the ball was still sort of in the air and uh, picked up the penalty Pointer Sheet Metal, a proud supporter of Center Grove Trojan football for a second year in a row. Pointer Sheet Metal will be relocating from Bloomington to Greenwood. They'll be moving into a state-of-the-art fabrication facility in December. If you have a project in metal, big or small, look no further than Pointer Sheet Metal, soon moving to the Greenwood area. Appreciate their support of Trojan football. 
Blood Green linebacker showing blitz. He's coming strong. And the quarterback, Thurman, gets outside and picks up good yardage. He'll get to the 45, a nine-yard gain for Thurman on first down. Yeah, and I don't know if uh, if he just recognized that or what, but uh, a good play by Thurman there. He saw uh, Lundgren coming off the off the edge, and he was able to make him miss and then and then pick up very good yardage, nine yards on first down for North Central, easily their best first first down play all, all night. Six and a half minutes to play in the third. Thurman gets out of the pocket, takes a big hit as he releases. It's incomplete. He was hit by Gavin Everett, the defensive end. Everett, uh, a senior at 6'4", 225 pounds. Yeah, you see him applying the pressure here, and uh, Thurman took another big hit and uh, rushed him just enough for him not to make that connection with his wide receiver. Third and one. From the gun, Thurman. Uh, there was movement there. Yeah, left side of the line for North Central took off too soon. Again, they're just not used to the backup quarterback, uh, Thurman's uh, signal calling. Just seems like there's that hesitation in his signal calling, yep. and uh, they're just jumping off a little bit too soon. It's a big penalty too, so instead of third and short, they move back to uh, third and a little bit a little bit longer than five. The Center Grove fan base starting to thin a little bit here as we're now halfway through the third quarter. Great crowd though tonight. Center Grove Band and Football League night uh, brought out a lot of youngsters. They saw a great first half and a lot of them may be heading home to get some good sleep for the night as they uh, will be getting up tomorrow to play some football games be a little bit a uh, little bit better conditions at 10 o'clock in the morning tomorrow about uh, 20 degrees better than last Saturday at 10 o'clock when it was about 46 and uh, my third and fourth grade team wasn't uh, too fond of those <laughs> those temperatures uh, we didn't really show up till about 11 45 for that 10 o'clock game and you still got the dew on the grass so yeah it's wet cold fingers are hurting <laughs> oh my goodness i heard them all last saturday of course when they look over and they see the coach on the sideline with a stocking cap and gloves on himself i guess it's hard to blame him i'll admit i had my gloves on last saturday as well thurman gets out of the pocket wanted a pass sandwiched at the 50 picks up a couple <laughs> javon swan chasing him down Great effort by Swan. He chased him all over the field and did not give up at all and uh, was able to get a hand on him, and then uh, the other guys cleaned it up, Everett and company. 5.20 to play third quarter. 37 to nothing, all center grow. Trojans with a touchdown and a safety here in the second half. Calvin Daggett, three scores tonight, two on the ground. Caught one for a touchdown. Devin Wilson made the tackle for the safety for the Center Grove Trojans. Nice play by North that Central. That was a good play. That was a well-designed play, well-blocked play by their offensive line. And uh, looks like they're going to be just short of the first down, but that will bring up third and short. Kind of ran to that weak side with McLean, the fullback. Uh, real, very effective. And, uh, yeah, they're just going to be just short of the first down, third, yeah. and third and one. And this is a good drive so far, by far their best drive of the of the ball game. But the, they've picked up about 40 yards so far and converted at least two third down. Hand off right back to McLean. I think he got it. Yeah. Center Grove with a nice initial hit on McLean, but again, he is so strong and powerful. 220-some pound fullback. Drags the center group tacklers for a first down. Yeah, and you know he's pretty had a uh, pretty quiet but uh, very good ball game so far on that defensive side for Center Grove is uh, Jackson Sodrell, and he continues to get better and he continues to make uh, plays at the linebacker position. New set of downs at the Trojan 42 for North Central. 
Four minutes to play in the third. Oh. McLean dodges Javon Swan in the backfield. Javon nearly had him drop for a big loss. Javon, though, couldn't quite get his paws on him. Yeah, he, uh, Javon got a little help, I think, as well, on why he couldn't get his paws on him when his paws were getting held by uh, the North Central offensive lineman. That's, that contributed to him not making that play. Five yards for McLean. Thurman fakes the handoff to McLean, throws on the run. Ooh. His man is not open. Not only is he single covered, he had double coverage down there with Zach and Josh Hart. Yeah, and, uh, they're, they're spelled the same, but they are not related. And it's a it's a good thing that that was a duck, and that was not a good looking pass because if he threw a spiral, uh, the only two guys that had a chance to catch that were guys in the red jerseys, not the white jersey. Bring up about third and six for North Central. And I'm sure it's four down territory since this is uh, almost their deepest, pen or probably is their deepest penetration of the night. Thurman looking right, throwing right, overthrows his receiver. Center Grove tried to pick it off, but he even overthrew the uh, defenders for Center Grove as well. Anthony Neal, the intended receiver. Center Grove with fine coverage over here with uh, Zach Hart and Josh Hart. And I'm sure Center Grove's defense and defensive coordinator want to uh, preserve that shutout with the starters on the field and not allow any points. So right now it's all about a pride thing. Fourth and five at the Trojan 37. Thurman looked left, now coming back to the right side, throws up a duck and it is picked off and it had been better if Josh Hart would have just batted it down. It was almost like a, a punt, if you will, fair for uh, North Central and a fair catch. But uh, it goes in the stat sheet as an INT for Josh Hart. Yeah, I don't know. Well, or pick it off and try to run it back because it looked like he uh, looked like that's what he was going to do. But uh, I guess it's hard to, as a defensive back, you always want to pad the old stat book and uh, get you another interception there. And that was a, a very easy one to make. from the Center Grove 12 yard line. Three minutes to play, 37 to nothing, three minutes left in the third. We still got the fourth quarter yet to go. Is the running clock in the fourth quarter, Kevin? You would think they would put that in Indiana uh -oh. High School football. And here comes Calvin Daggett down the sideline, trying to beat the couple of safeties and he gets it all the way to the 35 yard line. Great run by Calvin Daggett. About 53-yard run by Daggett and uh, great blocking on the left side of the line by Center Grove and Daggett goes Daggett goes over 100 yards on the day and uh, a, a big game for Center Grove and here comes Daggett out now get that young man some oxygen he has been the workhorse tonight gonna take this one off this play here Ted might have to go back to the. He used to do the old run, Jimmy, run. <laughs> run, Calvin, run. You don't have to do run, Calvin, run. Here's uh, Trevor Holt, sophomore. Nice run on first down. And here comes Calvin. Out one play, back in the next, ready to go. Some good lead blocking by Max Norris. That's the thing about the wing tee. You're not just a running back. You've got to be a blocker as well. Yeah, and uh, McCoy does a fantastic job of that. He hasn't got as many carries as, as he got last week with Ben Davis, but he's made the most of it. And, and most importantly, he's blocked very well for Norris and Daggett. There's Max Norris breaking him. Norris. First down and a whole lot more for the senior to the 15 yard line. Best way to describe that is he ran angry on that one, just running people over, and that's definitely a dimension that Norris has this year as far as with that added weight that he's picked up is uh, the ability to gain those tough yards and, and run over some people. 
Double wing back. Max Norris straight ahead, Touchdown. right up the gut. Touchdown. 15-yard run by Max Norris. His second score tonight. Yeah, and that's very unusual when you see a guy go straight up. Straight up the gut and hardly get touched. And uh, right now it looks like North Central just wants no part and uh, would be perfectly happy to get on that bus right now. Good run by Daggett. I mean by Max Norris. Snap by Combs, hold by Siderwitz. The kick by Snyder is good, and Center Grove leads at 44 to nothing. Offensive explosion tonight for Center Grove. Much needed for the Trojans. Well, and it's good to just take care of business because you're always afraid as, you know, North Central struggling, you're, you're struggling a little bit. You never want to let a team that you feel like you're better than hang around at all, and that's what's happened a couple times with North Central over the last five years. They always have the talent, or it just seems like they always have the athletes, but uh, 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 struggling like they are and getting beat by the Lawrence North team that hadn't won in three years last week, you uh, you want to make sure you take care of them early and uh, don't ever let them gain any confidence, and that what that's what Coach Moore and his team's done tonight. Our third quarter being presented by REMAX, the great team of Mark Linder and Tiffany McClurg. Center Grove is uh, approaching 400 yards in total offense now, and uh, they've run the exact same number of plays as North Central, 38. Average yards per play for Center Grove, 10.1. For North Central, 1.4. That's a first down per play. Impressive. Daggett's at 136 yards. Norris is at 76, and and Titus is at 64, and that's just rushing. Daggett's got another 57 through the air, so he's uh, he's approaching 200 yards of total offense. Another kickback or touchback for Nathaniel Snyder. Senegro back in action next Friday night, right back here at Ray Skillman Stadium, homecoming night. The opponent, the Lawrence Central Bears. Senegro. Went to North Lawrence Central last year and beat him pretty badly. And uh, Center Grove would like to try to make it two in a row. Good win tonight. Tried to put a string together here, put a run together. Yeah, and last check uh, earlier or midway through the second quarter, um, Lawrence Central and Pike were in a pretty good game. Lawrence Central was up 17 to 15. So uh, um, that's another team that struggled a little bit this year so far. First team defense still in for Center Grove. One would think you usually play through three quarters. We got 90 seconds left in the third, and then coach might start working in some backups in that in that fourth quarter. Five yard gain on first down for North Central. Going back with the running game. Center Grove clamping down. 45 with the big hit, big stick for Center Grove right there. Now there are a few backups in now. You got uh, you got the roster, Kevin. Dan uh, Root, Dan Root, sophomore with the tackle. He's number 45. Yeah, they're starting to mix in some backup players now. Third and six. Another handoff to McLean. Gets outside, picks up the first down, still on his feet, and now the ball comes out, goes out of bounds. He's going to be stopped at the 42-yard line. McLean, again, not a bad fullback. He runs hard, very strong. Yeah, that was a good run right there, a, a well-designed play. Um, North Central's went back to their starting quarterback as well, number three, Austin Roberts, for this drive. On first down, Roberts throwing incomplete pass, nearly picked off by Tyler Pence. Junior safety now in there for the Trojans. Tyler comes up with that. That might be a pick six. Yeah, you're right, Kevin. He was in a good position there to make a play, and uh, 
Ball was just a little bit underthrown. If that had been thrown a little bit higher, then Pence was going to be right there to take it. Take it to the house. Cole Fresher also on the coverage. Three minutes, should say 30 seconds to play here in the uh, third quarter. Oh, did he get it? Did Blake Moran? Moran. Yes, he did. Wow. He intercepted it. Blake Moran, the junior, with his first pick at the 49-yard line. Let's take a look at it. The old tip drill, Kevin. We might be lucky that there's no instant replay in high school football there. But Moran, to his credit, did, did the smart angle. thing. Different angle. Yeah, His hands are underneath of it. I guess that's good. But uh, wisely, he got up quickly, went over and handed it to the referee and got off the field and said, that's an interception for me. Holt on the carry now. Trevor Holt. Fine run on first down inside the 45 to the 44. That might be, it should be your final play of the third quarter. Also new quarterback in there for the Trojans, Jack Kellums, 6'3", sophomore, and that will be your final play of the quarter. Center Grove in front, 44 to nothing over North Central in this conference matchup. This is Center Grove Trojan football. The milk from other supermarkets is fresh, wholesome, and expensive. The milk from Aldi is also fresh and wholesome, but it costs a lot less. And when you consider that our milk comes from the same place as theirs does, paying more for it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Not even to her. At Aldi, the same as OS. Quarter number four tonight being presented by Aldi. Only Aldi has the great food and low prices to make the big game even better. Aldi simply smarter shopping. Kevin Conrad, Rick Embry with you. The Trojans very, very impressive here tonight, leading now 44 to nothing to get things underway here in the fourth quarter. And a lot of subs now in for the Center Grove Trojans. Jack Kellums, your new quarterback, and here comes... Holt on another fine carry, short of the 30, picks up the first down. Trevor Holt looking very impressive. You're right, Kevin. He has a he has an extra little burst to him, and uh, and very impressive few runs for for Holt so far, and uh, good cutbacks, and and he's hitting the hole with authority, and good job not only hitting the hole, but uh, he's getting good blocking up front. Kellums. Hand off to another backup, and that is Tristan Clark, 5'8", 180-pound sophomore. Straight ahead running. Player a little slow to get up for North Central. That's the story of their night. They've had several situations where guys have gotten injured and uh, been down for a little while and uh, on defense especially. Kenneth Wright a little slow to get up, but he stays in the game. Whistles on the field, timeout, North Central. North Central wants to regroup. Center Grove with the football at the Panther 25-yard line, second and three. 11-19 to play in the fourth. Center Grove, 44 to nothing. Next week's opponent isn't a barn burner. It's 34-31 Pike over LC with 52 seconds to go in the third quarter. Other Mick action. Uh, Another good one, probably the highlight game of the night, Warren and Ben Davis in their 21-21 going into the fourth quarter. Uh, and Carmel ended up winning their game pretty handily, 42-20 to over, over Lawrence North. Marine Center Boating Superstore is Indiana's most award-winning dealership. They've been named to Boating Industries' top 100 boat dealers in North America for the last 10 years. Marine Center Boating Superstore has more than 200 new and used boats in stock. Plus, they have Indy's largest device or service department and the biggest parts and accessory store in the Midwest. Don't miss their fall boat sale with the lowest prices of the year. Marine Center is the only place to go for all your boating needs and a very much a proud supporter of Center Group Trojan football. You 
know things are going well when you got Neil Diamond going on. Neil Diamond. Yeah. Here at the Center Grove. A crowd favorite. Back to Tristan Clark, the sophomore. Man, nice hard. job. He is a physical runner. Nice spin move. Late flag going to go against North Central. It'll be first and goal inside the 10. Great run by Clark, like you said. Very physical runner. He got hit with contact and kept dragging guys, dragging guys. That's, I assume that was the 76. Yeah, 76 with the push at the very end of the play. It is a personal foul against North Central, and the replay didn't look like much. But he spent more effort going 10 yards after the play when he didn't make a play on the ball. He spent more effort chasing down a, a little wide receiver and pushing him in the back after the play was already over. So, First and goal at the seven. Centigro with a lot of JV players in there. But a very impressive drive, Kevin, and that's what you always want to see by, by JV players that are coming in at the end of the game, and uh, they're running hard right now. Kellums rolling right, throwing right. Hits Tristan Clark. He's Tristan in. fights for the end zone, and he's just held oh. short. There was a big collision at the one-yard line, and – they're going to say he's not in the end zone. Boy, he did everything but get in the end zone. Yeah, I'll be interested to see this replay. A good little play action, bootleg pass from Kellens to Clark. He got hit. He tried to stretch it across the goal line and uh, came up just short. So uh, second and goal on the inside the one for Center Grove. David Day with the hit on Clark, the initial hit. No signal yet. He's in the end zone. Oh They're my. not going to give it to him. 33 on the carry. Kobe Brown, 5'5", 180-pound oh, sophomore. How is he not in the end zone? An inch shy. Third, less than an inch almost. Kellums will hand it off, end around. Nice move, Trevor Touchdown, Holt. Touchdown, Trevor Holt. Great job around the right side of sealing that corner. Holt made a little move on the cornerback to make him miss and was able to get in the end zone. A very impressive drive by Center Grove. Good blocking on yep. the edge. 13 was a, a good job on the, on the corner edge, like you said. Kellums to hold. Lost the uh -oh. football. Great job by Snyder, the kicker, to pick it up. He tried to throw it, and uh, I believe it was a completed pass inside the Titus. five to Titus McCoy, but Titus tackled shy of the goal line. So, uh, again, the, the snap went right through the hands of Jack Kellums, the sophomore quarterback. So your score, 50 to nothing, all Center Grove tonight. Trevor Holt with his first touchdown run of the season. I am not for sure if that might be his first varsity score. I can't remember last year as a freshman if he got in the end zone or not. I don't know if he did or not. I think I know he got in a couple games late in the year and in the playoffs, but uh, um, I don't think he ever got in the end zone. But uh, a very impressive drive by the backups for Center Grove, and, and uh, uh, that's always something you don't want to see uh, – a drop off when those guys come in and then the offense was aggressive ran hard between Holt and and uh, Tristan Clark running a uh, very impressive drive by Center Grove and now you you hope that the backup defensive guys do the same thing Nine forty nine to play in this one Center Grove's first conference win of the season 0 and 3 to begin the mix season loot losses to Warren Central, Carmel, and Ben Davis, your top three teams in the state. I Ace. believe this is the first time that Snyder's kicked to the south end zone, and he puts it in the end zone going to the south as well. Leg's not tired yet, Kevin. He might have a couple more in him. Proud supporter of Trojan football, Edmondson RV, located down in Edinburgh, Family owned and operated for more than 17 years. 
They are a one-stop shop for the RV Traveler. Edmondson RV offers complete sales and has a large indoor showroom for comfortable shopping. Provides service and parts of all types of recreational vehicles. Edmondson's RV, friendly and professional staff, welcomes you and looks forward to taking care of all of your RV needs. Please give them the opportunity to earn your business. Wow. Good you can hear the pop from here. 35. 35 with the hit. That is Zach Stamball. He's a junior. Bam. Nice, nice first down pickup by North Central. Good hit by Stamball coming out from the safety position. Now they run the same play to the other side. Good swing pass. Looks like they're going to pick up a first down. Roberts completes the pass. First down, North Central. Look like uh, number eight, Connor Spinney, in on the tackle for the Trojans, among others. Nine minute mark. Fourth quarter, swing pass to the near side. It is complete. Darian Paget, sophomore. Coach Kreinhagen trying to get some of his youngsters in there as well. He still got most of his starters in, and I think uh, Coach Moore took notice and put back a few of his guys. Swans back in, and Sodrill's back in at linebacker as well. Also at linebacker, you see Bailey Bennett, sophomore, number four. Just doing that swing pass, and that is an incomplete pass. Good job, though, by Center Grove's Dan Root. He pursued it just in case it was a backwards pass or lateral. Man, that's close. That's real close if you look at that replay. It, uh smart play by... Root, uh, yeah, Dan Root. Root. And it was probably a good play by not catching the ball in North Central as long as it was a forward pass because he would have lost about five yards. Third and four. Nothing there. Butler gets credit for the tackle. Fourth and four. Great job by the interior defensive line. Dropping back deep for the Trojans. Will Smithy, Jr. at his own 26 yard line. Young to punt this one away. Good hang time. Smithy calls for a fair catch. And no, the 28. no inadvertent whistle right there, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Clean play. Yep. Talking about at halftime, I, I still don't know how you have an invert, inadvertent whistle on uh, on a punt catch like we had in the first half, but it didn't it didn't matter because you know like they say in, in basketball the ball don't lie and what happened the next the next punt it uh, deflected off of the center row guy and North Central got it back anyway. Our fourth quarter being presented by Aldi. Only Aldi has the great food and low prices to make the big game even better. And All day, simply smarter shopping. They are getting close, Kevin, to getting that store done on 135. I went by there pretty late last night, and uh, there were still guys out there working in the parking lot and everything at uh, 830 or so. So uh, getting pretty close. Uh, know the, the owner, or the manager of that store, Laura Bauer, and uh, her and her group's done a fantastic job of supporting not only this broadcast, but uh, both the, the Center Grove Boys Basketball League and the Center Grove Phantom Football League, and we appreciate Laura and, and all of her help and, and her team. See ya. There goes Holt. Come on, Holt. In the open field, being chased from behind, ah. and he's brought down inside the 15-yard line. Goodness. Looked like, looked like his mom till about the 20, and then it looked like his dad the last five yards right there. He got caught, but uh, great run. Good job hitting the hole. Fantastic job um, by the offensive line with that hole, and, and Holt hit it, and uh, – Big gain of about 40, 45 yards right there, and, and now Center Grove has the ball inside the 15 again. 
David Day, senior defensive back, chased him down, and Day now down <laughs> on the field. I think he hurt his hand or arm on the play. We'll watch it again here. Holt being chased by Day, and Day reaches out and was able to trip him up, and then Day was real slow to get back to his feet. But uh, he has something to do with his, I believe, his hand or arm, and he's going to be looked at. Stops the clock with 6.54 to play here in the fourth quarter. 50 to nothing. Trojans with the shutout over North Central. And right there you see the blocking. 13 again for Center Grove down the field. Uh, got in the way of a couple guys, and uh, the right side of that offensive line was able to, to carve a hole for, for Holt. My roster says 13 is McCullough Gardner. He's a sophomore. He's made two good blocks around the right side. Him and... Uh, Trevor Holt might have to buy him some some lunch or something in the next couple days because he sprung him on the touchdown and then he did a good job of springing him on that long run. Holt is now up to rushing wise 81 yards on five carries. And Center Grove is wow. Did you hear that final? Warren Central 27, Ben Davis 21. Warren Central rallies. They were down, what, 21-6? Yeah, 21, so 21, yep. That 21 and answered points to beat Ben Davis 27-21. So that's the first loss for Ben Davis, and Warren remains undefeated. That, that just surprises me, too, because, I mean, that Warren Central team. But, but we said the start of the year, and uh, they're going to improve, and, and they were still trying to figure out if they were going to run the ball or if they were going to try to pass the ball a little bit. But uh, that defense was fantastic against Center Grove in the first game of the year. But uh, um, they've obviously improved offensively. 6'10 to play. I don't think he was ever down. That's a touchdown. They're going to say here that his knee was down. That's Kobe Brown. It almost looked like to me that he came down on top of the defensive guy. And our fantastic production staff's got it dialed up. Man, unless his knee was down, but there's no way that where the, the official on this side was the one that call, came in and called him down, and there's no way that he could see his knee. Third and one. Kellum's sophomore quarterback hands it off. They go right back to Kobe Brown, and he first gets down. it to the one. First down, it'll be first and goal at the one. Kobe Brown doing a great job, running hard, running downhill. Not a very big kid either. What's he listed on the roster, He's Kevin? He's 5'5", five, but 180 pounds. Wow. 5'5", five, five. so there's hope for the Embrys to be able to play <laughs> high school football at 5'5". Five five. That's, that's about what they're going to be when they, get, uh, when they get in high school. First and goal at the one. He's Center in. Grove, touchdown, one-yard run. Number 13, who just made a couple good blocks, uh, was able to get in the end zone. What's his name again, Kevin? The roster says McCullough Gardner. I'm not for sure if that's McCullough or not because I know he was hurt. Yep, that's what uh, okay. Mr. Mueller just said. He was hurt in the red-white scrimmage with a dislocated elbow, and I didn't know if he was back or not, so but it appears that that was Gardner, and he's in there for the touchdown. He's a sophomore. <laughs> Kellums with the hold, puts it down. The kick is good. 57 zip. Trojans dominating tonight's conference game against North Central. Again, Coach Kreinhagen, first year as head coach. Taking over for Coach Shelton. Crian Hagen's been with North Central on the staff since 2002, and he's got some work to do. Uh, again, North Central, one of your big schools in the state. They have athletes. Just uh, got to get the program headed in the right direction. Well, that's what uh, it's just. We were talking at halftime. Bo and I were talking about. You've got a school that has 4,500 kids. It's just mind-boggling to us that they cannot find 50 to 75 uh, kids out of boys out of that group of 4,500 that can be 
put on a but more competitive product out on the field, especially when you look at, I mean, their basketball team is always, I mean, they're sending kids to the pros and major colleges and everything else, and, and it just, uh, they haven't been able to build a program over there at North Central. Uh-oh, uh-oh. He did not get to the end zone on that one. No, he did not. Finally wore out after 57 <laughs> <Yeah>. points. <laughs> I think I'll have to run at practice on Monday for that one. You know about the only person that's not getting in the ball game so far tonight is uh, one number 98, Drew Conrad from the punter position. And that's a good thing. <laughs> if you don't punt, it means you're uh, – Doing a lot of scoring. That's what Trojans are doing tonight. I, I just wonder how much more they have left in the in the fireworks over there. That's a good point. That's a very good point. <laughs> they might have had to go at halftime and go to the nearest uh, <laughs> yeah. nearest Quickie Mart with uh, with the fireworks. Maybe and, uh, we can get one of those firework places as a sponsor. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so when it goes off, we could say, "Hey, there goes another yep. firework from so and so." Yeah. Just say out of state fireworks, and you're pretty much covered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, around 4th of July in my subdivision, it seems like a <laughs> almost like a war zone. <laughs> it's, it's not even 4th of July. It starts about mid-June and then uh, finishes about August. We're inside. Five minutes to play in this one. Tomorrow, the freshman team will play North Central here, and the JV team will head up to North Central to play tomorrow morning. Good tackle by number 60 for Center Grove. Loss of about two in the backfield. Adam Meredith, senior defensive tackle. Gets outside. That's the starting quarterback tonight. Smithy, I think, on the tackle there for Center Grove, number 12. Actually, the backup quarterback, excuse me, Roy Thurman. They've used a couple of quarterbacks tonight, but Thurman's been the in the backup role tonight. Sam Bolin, right corner back here in the your shot here, 28. Up and coming sophomore. Hand off to McLean right up the middle. Good hit by number 37, Logan Bontrager, another sophomore. Good run, good hit. Hear the pads crunch from up here. Trying to figure out how Kitchell can work, take a half a day when he's in the broadcast booth and uh, and he just happened to take off a game that's 57 to nothing. <laughs> It'd be nice to be big time. He planned that one well. Yes, he did. And he's ended up at a oh, fumble. Fumble. Oh, did that go out of bounds? Let's see if the Trojans oh, possessed my. it or not before it went out of bounds. I don't believe so. It will be North Central football. Meredith was one that hit him again. Quarterback sort of stopped and then uh, – Got hit by number 49 for Center Grove, which Nick, caused the fumble. Nick Coy. Nick Coy. Sophomore. Linebacker, right? Yes. Second and 15 at the North Central 32. 250 to play in the fourth. Really good run by McLean. Still short of the first down. Tackled at the 45-yard line. Jordan Dean, senior, runs on to the field. That'll bring up third and short for North Central. Two and a half minutes remaining. Will Smithy on that far side, your left cornerback. Third and a couple he trying get to that. get that first down outside. Cedar Grove really doing a good job. Good closing Corbin speed on that far side. Who did he say it was? Corbin Bowling? Number 18. Corbin Bowling, junior. Fourth and short. First time this year, Rick, that uh, the backups 
chance to get some uh, significant minutes. Yeah, we've been a little bit spoiled in the past because we normally have seen these guys, but we also haven't seen Warren, Carmel, and Ben Davis uh, this early in the season. But uh, good to see these guys because it usually means we're rolling and uh, also equally good to see them play very well on defense so far and uh, in offense, getting a couple touchdowns on the board. I mean, these are the guys that are going to see significant minutes next year, mm. the, the, the sophomores and the, and the juniors. Man, he had him in the backfield. Uh, two guys had running back dead to the rights, and he was able to spin a little bit. 92 had him, and then uh, he was able to wiggle away and, and pick up just enough. Jordan Dean almost had him. Jordan Dean, six foot, 190 pound, defensive end, senior. Dean running off the field. Good hit at the 45-yard line. Under a minute to play, Kevin. Nick Arbuckle, another sophomore linebacker with a good hit. Under a minute. McLean with the first down. Takes a jarring hit at the 35-yard line. Center Grove would like to preserve this uh, shutout. 32 seconds to play. Logan Bontrager gets the tackle. North Central, in case anybody really thinks they might call a timeout, has one timeout left. 24 seconds. Clock is rolling. North Central a little confused here offensively. Yeah, they've wasted about 15 seconds. Uh, and they ran the wrong way. Going to run the football. It's a busted play. and that might, That'll be the ball game unless they call yeah, timeout. Yeah, kept him in yeah, bounds. He's not calling one. And that will be the ball game. 57 nothing. your final. Center Grove needed to win. They got it in big-time fashion. 57 to nothing, the final score over North Central. Center Grove's second win of the season. And their first in the conference, now one and three in the conference. North Central still winless on the year. Coming up next, our postgame show. This is Center Grove Trojan football. If you want to cut your grocery bill, you typically have to cut the amount of groceries you buy. But when you switch to Aldi, you can cut your grocery bill by up to 50% without cutting back on groceries. At Aldi, we give you longer receipts for less money. And that's the truth. Aldi, simply smarter shopping. Hi, I'm Mark Lender. And I'm Tiffany McClurg with the Lender McClurg team at Remax Select. We would like to say thank you for making us Center Grove's go-to real estate team year after year. We take great pride in supporting and giving back to our community. Throughout the years, we have supported many blood drives, fundraisers, and have been named a top donator for Riley Children's Hospital. We are super excited to be a top sponsor for Center Grove football this year. Remember, when buying, selling, or building, please remember to call the Lender McClurg team. Go Trojans. Trojans. Where's the best place to get answers about your water? Aqua Systems, the home water experts. Since 1959, Aqua Systems has been manufacturing and installing top quality water softeners, drinking water systems, and whole house filtration systems for even the toughest water issues. Stop by anytime to get your water tested free and learn more about how we can help you have better water. If you need bottled water or salt delivered to your home or office, we do that too. CG football fans, mention this ad and get a special discount. And most importantly, go Trojans. When I raised my son, I never knew he was going to be a custom home builder. But what I did know, whatever he did, he would be the best. Great win tonight for the Center Grove Trojans winning 
against the North Central Panthers. 57 zip, your final, and Center Grove returning home tonight to the friendly confines of Ray Skillman Stadium and Rick Embry. They just took care of business tonight. Center Grove, well over 500 yards of total offense on the ground tonight. 401 yards rushing and uh, led by Daggett. Three touchdowns tonight, a couple on the ground, one through the uh, air. He had 136 yards rushing, but uh, Center Grove put it all together tonight, all phases. Yeah, and I think that's what uh, Coach Moore has been looking for in the last uh, the last four games is that third running option. You had Norris and, uh, and McCoy that have pretty much carried the load throughout the first four games of the season, and uh, it's nice to see that third option come through, and uh, Calvin Daggett had a, had a huge game tonight. Really, really did. Calvin, the workhorse tonight in previous games we've seen uh, – Titus McCoy get a lot of the, the workload, but tonight it seemed to be number 24, Daggett. He got his number called quite a bit tonight. Yeah, and, and in the past three games, they had a little bit of a hard time getting around the edge, and, and they were able to set that edge with uh, with the guys on the offensive line, and, and that's where Daggett got most of his yards was, was getting around that corner and then making guys miss, and uh, he had a fantastic game tonight, as did the entire offense, and uh, – uh, great to see them get back on track and, and now uh, look forward to building a little momentum as, as they go into the second half of the season. And, Rick, the, the defense pitching a shutout tonight. Well, and it was aggressive from the start. You had Swan in that first series, I remember, had one sack, two quarterback hurries or, or pressures, and, and that just sets the tone from the start that uh, those guys came to play. Tid was fantastic. Everett was fantastic like he's been all year. Uh, the linebacker crew with Sears and Luttgren and, and Jackson Sodrell, and then the defensive backs did a, a good job of playing the pass as well for North Central or against North Central, and uh, an overall fantastic performance on, in all facets of the game. And the Center Grove defense with a safety to begin the second half, Devin Wilson with the tackle and gets credit for that. But, uh, uh, again, I just felt like all phases very solid tonight for the Center Grove Trojans, and this is what they needed uh, to kind of get that boost of confidence. And uh, Center Grove is so close against Warren Central and Carmel, played a good half against Ben Davis. So, uh, again, picking up their first conference win tonight after playing three nationally ranked teams, uh, feels pretty good to get one in the win column. Yeah, and you're right, Kevin. It's not like, a, you know, I've had a couple people ask me, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I said, you know what? They got beat in overtime 12 to 9 to Warren Central, who's undefeated. They got beat 21 to 14 on a touchdown with two minutes to go in the game to Carmel, who's undefeated. They got beat by Ben Davis, yes, but you look at the score and it was 28 nothing. But it's zero to zero with three minutes to go in the second quarter, and then they had a couple turnovers. So it's not like they're getting beat 57 to nothing by these teams. They're very competitive, and and most importantly, he'll have them continue to improve throughout the year. Coach Moore will, and uh, and. Uh, uh, they'll be ready come tournament time. Rick, uh, a big highlight that I noticed, uh, Max Norris, he had a couple of touchdowns on his first touchdown run. What a great gesture by the senior. Runs over here to the corner of the end zone, high-fiving the Center Grove Band of Football players down in that corner. Uh, again, at Center Grove Band of Football League night and uh, just made the night for about you know, half a dozen of those kids down there. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, I talked about at the start of the game where Coach Moore went over to all of those kids and was high-fiving them and and thanking the, the Bantam coaches for what what they do. And uh, and that's how you build a program. That's how he's got kids that are running out on the field as we as we watch after the game here. And, uh, and you know, these kids are always look up to the football players, the basketball players that are in high school. And a and fantastic gesture by Norris to come over there and give those guys a high five. Rick, how about our winners for tonight from the Center Grove Band of Football League. Here you go, Kevin. First for Monday, September 15, drawing for $50. Uh, the winners of business, Compass Realty and Insurance. Uh, Tuesday, September 16th, another $50. The winner is Jenny Swartz, S-W-A-R-T-Z. Wednesday, September 17th for $100, Mike and Michelle Berger. Thursday, September 18th, $50, Kevin Martin. Friday, September 19th for $100 is Angie Harrington. Saturday, September 20th for $100 is Michelle Hughes. And Sunday, September 21st for $150, Kirsten Smith. And we'll have one more of those drawings next Friday after the broadcast. Once again, thank you to everybody who, who bought the uh, – 
uh, bought the chances to, to win these prizes for the Center Row Bantam Football League. It's a, It was a fantastic fundraising effort for us, and uh, we appreciate all the help. Rick, appreciate your help here in the second half. Uh, have a great week. Uh, good luck tomorrow in your uh, Bantam football game. Thank you very much, Kevin. Tonight's game was produced by Center Grove Gridiron Productions, New 5 Creative, and CenterGroveSportsNetwork.com. The executive director is Aaron Holt, executive producer Matt Murray, our camera operator and production assistant Austin Tyke, and uh, our statisticians Bo Barrett and Jamie Smith. Special thanks to Center Grove Athletic Director John Zwitt and head football coach Eric Moore, along with North Central head coach Kevin Kreinhagen for their help with tonight's broadcast. Once again, Center Grove beats North Central 57 to nothing. Center Grove 2 and 4 on the season, 1 and 3 in the conference, North Central 0 and 5, 0 and 3 in the conference. Center Grove returns home next Friday night for homecoming to take on the Lawrence Central Bears for North Central. They head home to take on Carmel. Until Friday night, this is Kevin Conrad for Ted Kitchell and Rick Embry saying good night, everyone, from Ray Skillman Stadium at Center Grove High School.